Like it in the top corner? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's where we'd had it before. I believe that usually works. We'll put that down a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just a little bit more. Oh, I thought you've seen this shirt before, right? It's like the yes. Colossal Titan, but if he was a Super Nintendo boss battle. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Welcome back. Dude, there is literal tumbleweed on the road. You know that happened one time to me. Yeah. One time I was in the car with Tim. Uh, Tim and Nadia one time. Yeah. And we were driving down the road, and we, we had to stop. And the tumbleweed just literally just blew across the street. There were multiple <laughs> giant balls of tumbleweed oh, rolling multiple. around. And there was one that took oh, up that an entire up. lane worth oh. of traffic. Oh, shit. That people just That's had huge. to entirely drive around this tumbleweed. That's like a kaiju tumbleweed. Yes, it was, it was, a, it was, it was a kaiju tumbleweed. It was tumbleweed. a kaiju That's tumbleweed. amazing. Yes. <laughs> The fuck? How yeah, did that, that even happen? It was weird. How is there enough tumbleweed to, to make a tumbleweed that big? Why the fuck is there any tumbleweed in Minnesota? We should have eradicated that shit. <laughs> eradicate the tumbleweed. <laughs> well, it's just like, yeah, in Arizona or some fucking where I'd get it, but... I mean, uh, there, there, there's a lot of country I don't country expect to dri be driving in, in the inner city of Not downtown. Not the city, though, yeah, no around downtown St. Paul and expect there to just be giant tumbleweeds. No, I wouldn't I wouldn't think so. Um <laughs> well, how are you doing, man? I haven't seen you in like uh, about a week, right? Yep. Yeah? Yep, that's what it's been. <laughs> um pretty good. Is this anything um, just interesting I just, or I just saw well, Idris Elba said that Knuckles will not be sexy. In Sonic 2? I think I got. I wasn't <laughs> expecting him to be in the first place. Apparently, somebody was, so. <laughs> it, it seems like That's it's, all, it, it's almost like Idris Elba was the only one expecting Knuckles to be sexy. Yeah, he's like, ah, oh, man, I fly, I, we finally started production, and can you guys believe this? Yeah. You're not making it me sexy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. He's just saying because he's sexy that people would assume, assume Knuckles, Knuckles would be would sexy. Be sexy. As well. I think that's all it was. Oh, yeah. I see. I do think that's what it was. But no, no, sorry. How, how are you doing? Not, not no, so much no, sexy I mean, as Zelda, but... That's fine. I mean, <laughs> well, it's like, you know how, like, last week Aunt Lynn texted me saying that um, I wouldn't be able to use the toilet for, like, three weeks or whatever? <laughs> yeah. Well, and then she told me this week, she was like, oh, I missed... Three more weeks. No, well, she's like, I misread that text. They were just saying that you won't be able to use the toilet in three weeks. But not for these three weeks. But for the three weeks following the, the previous No, three no. Weeks. I mean, it'll be a very <laughs> short amount of time that they'll be working on the plumbing. But it's just... So we went an entire week without <sighs> using the, t the toilet. For no reason. Yes. Oh, God. my God. <laughs> I feel like I have to read all her mail now just so I can fucking... <laughs> interpret it correctly just be like hey what is that okay let me read it let me read it once let me just double check what that actually says yeah <laughs> so yeah. that was about the most asinine experience of uh <laughs> uh it's just some funny just some funny moments that come yeah. out uh do you see they just they just confirmed uh dune part two like, okay. it's, it's been successful enough that they're going to make the second half of the movie. Okay, did you like the first one? <laughs> haven't seen it yet. Oh, I thought I you were I was planning saying... on doing it, like, uh, right away, and uh, I just have been... I just haven't had the chance to I, really stop and do I'm it. I'm with you there. I mean, are we still hanging out on Saturday for Halloween and stuff? Yeah. All right. I mean, um, it's not a Halloween yeah, movie, No, really, it's not, but... but, I mean, I don't know. Uh, with everybody there, who else would be interested in watching it? Yeah, but... that's the other thing. I don't yeah. know that everybody's going to be, like, that into it. So, I don't know if we'll do it then, but... Sure. I mean, if, if, if you want to hold off on yeah. seeing it, yeah. I will go see it with you when, yeah, we, when yeah. we have the opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I'd like that. that's a movie I would like to see in the theater. Yes, I, really I would, would. too. Yeah, me too. I was sure. going to watch it on HBO Max first so I could s just see it at all and then go see it a second time in the theater. But... Right. I just watched, uh, I just rewatched Hellraiser 2 last night. Can maybe use some rest. I, I don't know if I ever saw the second one. I actually like the second one better yeah. than the first one. Um, I still think the, the script was not the greatest at times. Mm. Um, Oh, that's really just going up by a single percentage point, huh? Yeah. And then... I can't do that. Eh. 
I figure I might as well uh, transfer rewards. We'll, 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 we'll upgrade everything eventually. Yeah. We will. There's nothing. No stone will be left unturned in this game. <laughs> I am determined to be like 100% this shit. Um, what was that cane line I came up with forever ago? It's like, I will leave no ass cheek unturned or whatever. Is that what, <laughs> what that he's talking about? Noah Wells or whatever. Why does it say I have one of these unlocked and I don't think I do? Uh, after you manually reload, your next shot will be empowered. Cool. Mm. This is a slightly different gun here. Alright. I'm also going to move the remote south of the screen so that... Because otherwise it looks weird like I'm the one holding the remote but just doing nothing with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the like when you like you have a little like sibling or cousin when you're kids and you hand right. the controller and I you're know. like, yeah, you're playing the game. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm just used to when there's a game controller just near me just holding just it, holding but, it you know... Drunken Flourish, Trippy Shot, Drunken Dash. I like the dash, actually, quite a right. bit. But then, I, I don't know. Special. Let's still do that, just because it's the epic. <laughs> right. Yeah, then... I had a class, Writer's Workshop. I'm going to we'll continue, but yeah. I'm also going to let Ulysses know that we are shooting Hades. Oh, for sure. Just before this, where... We all sat around for the entire, like, hour and a half, but nobody had actually read, like, anybody's piece that we oh, were seriously? talking about. I mean, we, we read one person's piece, so we talked about that for about 30 minutes. And then uh, then the rest of the time, it's just like, I was thinking, guys, we can go at flipping any point. <laughs> Oh, really? But, um, it was just like one of those, like, we, we could leave. Yeah, we it, it's a group of fantasy writers, so of course, everybody just nerded out, jizzed out nerdisms for an hour. They're, 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 um, they're just, like, obsessed with all, they're just talking about lore. <laughs> yeah, we're just talking about world building Tolkien and, and all this other shit, and it's like... Like, I want to I wanna see my family now. <laughs> right. Let me go home. Yeah, and then the, the the dude I told you about who's got, like, a kind of Stephen Wright delivery oh, yeah. with everything he says. I mean, it's just his voice, too, but, um, you know, he, he came up with some good jokes, I'll say, during the thing, because ah. we were taught, he seems to like berserker-type characters in media, like the Hulk or whatever. He, okay. could, he, he couldn't shut up about Planet Hulk or the Ryan Gosling, Gosling movie Drive. He couldn't shut up about Ryan Gosling did, did in you, general. Did you see the whole thing about how supposedly they're doing a World War Hulk movie? I was... Really? Okay. And now, I, I think know. it's going to be one of those things where they take a title and apply it to like somewhat of a different story. Yeah, because he said... Yeah, he has some opinions that... Well, why I like the guys, he has some opinions that aren't majority opinions, but, like, he said he hated Thor Ragnarok because he loved that story. He loved the Planet Hulk storyline. So, to him, they just desecrated that. And I was like, well, I can't argue with that. That's a fair... It's not really a Hulk story. It's a, Hulk, yeah. it's a Thor storyline with a little Hulk in it. Yeah. With the fact that he's on a gladiator planet thrown in there for right, a right. plot. Yeah, sure. And I, I can understand that. Yeah. I mean, I like that book a lot, too, actually. But, yeah. yeah and, but and, I, I get it. I do. And, um, I don't know, he was just talking about how he'd like actual Berserker characters to reflect the Berserkers of real history. That right. in fact, In the fact that they took a bunch of mushrooms before going into battle or whatever. You well, know. you know, uh, I know Thor 2 gets shat on a lot, but um, that's actually a fairly accurate uh, kind of depiction of a berserker warrior. When they've got uh, fucked scourge. up right before, yeah. Yep, that's true. Yep, the uh, henchman character, who we always said would have would, would have been better to survive yeah. over the main Malekith villain anyway. Right. Would have been a more, slightly more interesting story if they had just let him be the main villain. Yeah, and then I said to him, like, yeah... It's a shame they never do that with Hulk in the comics. The Hulk just takes a bunch of mushrooms or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see that Totally shit. fucked up. And he was like, oh my god, yes. Hulk would just be like, Hulk vibe, you know? That's Hulk what vibe. <laughs> <laughs> that's so great. He, that's funny. He, he, he is a funny dude. That's, um, that's hilarious. Yeah. Very much goes his own way in a topic. So, like, if it's not something that 
pertains to his interests, it's probably not going to be something he talks about for very long, you know? Okay. So he wouldn't be a very much of a team player conversationalist, sure. I don't think, in that way. That's, you know, yeah, I get you, I get you. <laughs> well, I'm, 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 did you, I'm curious, this is something I talked mm. about on a, well, one of my solo streams the other day when I was just streaming by myself. Yeah. But have you, have you seen, uh, I've ever seen this, uh, it's from 1978 or 79, or something like that. Uh. Um, it's this interview from an Australian talk show with Tom Waits. Um, and it is the inspiration for Heath Ledger's, Heath Ledger's Joker. Ledger's Joker. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I had not seen that before, and that yeah. kind of blew my mind a little bit. Like just how fucking weird Tom. I mean, I knew I know Tom Waits is weird. I've always known Tom Waits was weird, right. but mm -hmm. for him to be the Joker inspiration, that kind of blew my mind a little bit. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I do feel like he likely pulled from. I mean, a couple obviously of not sources, only that one thing, but. but yeah, that was definitely a big. I hate these guys. <laughs> yeah, we got we were stuck on one boss for the almost that entire Bloodborne stream. Oh shit! Really? We even had another person, uh, another streamer, come into the chat and yeah. actually like come in and play with us. Oh. Uh, nice. Because we needed we we needed a third person to beat it, right? So that now honestly, I think I mean I know you you might not be uh like uh the the kind of person that just gets super into like a Dark Souls type game where you have to spend all the time you know learning all these systems and stuff, but Bloodborne in particular being not a, like a Dark Souls game and a horror game is yeah. fucking cool. I, I know you would at least yeah. really appreciate the art design. Well, I like the, the graphics game. whenever I see you play it, yeah. It's really fucking cool. <laughs> Alright. Chain lightning. You have to take damage if I was struck by lightning. Um, do, let's do the attack. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> yeah, it's his, it's his Peter Tingle. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you, what do you think about uh, about the idea? I feel like we might have talked about this before, mm. but what do you think about the idea of uh, in in this Spider-Man movie mm. of them finally using the with great power comes great responsibility line. Bro, if but it's from Tobey Maguire, Maguire that, that, that would be great. Yeah. I, I think that would be a... Uh, I was just thinking about it again. I got into another conversation with somebody about that. I'm like, yeah. that'd just be, it'd be kind of perfect. Yeah, because I feel like that's something we spitballed like forever ago. And now that it and almost seems like it's something they can actually do, is kind of nuts. That Yeah, that'd be beyond sick. I was, I was telling somebody that hadn't heard anything about the Spider-Man movie, and I was just talking about it, like, what it's going to be like in general. Mm. And they were like, wow, that almost sounds like a religious experience for Spider-Man fans. <laughs> like, to, for, yeah. like, a 20-year, like, oh, let's, like, you know, tell a story that... It would be a very cool way if to, it's like, good anyway. <laughs> overtly tie, in a way, all the Spider-Man movies that Sony's ever made together into, like, one... You know, as if this was the franchise idea we had all along, you know. Right, which um, I mean, which of course it's fucking not, yeah. <laughs> They're definitely just coming up with this, like, as they go. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, if it works out, it works out. Yeah. Then I saw... Uh, fucking, what's it called? Oh, No Time to Die. I saw the with How's my that? dad over the weekend. because How's that? I, um... You know, of course, he's a huge... James Bond fan, so uh, like a lot of dads, so I uh, and that is my dad's favorite actor, you know, to Daniel play, Craig. yeah. To I mean, play I, him, I so. use my favorite actor to play him too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's and w what I've always liked about Craig too, and Pierce Brosnan said this one time, like uh, during a stream he did of himself watching Goldeneye like a couple of years ago. Daniel Craig did? No, Pierce Brosnan. Well, Pierce um, Brosnan did. No, I don't, I don't see Daniel Craig ever doing something like that. Maybe when he's older, because this is Pierce Brosnan when he's like about 60 now he's or Dr. whatever. He's Dr. Fate and age. He's Dr. He's the exact. And, um, 
Yeah, P- and Pierce Brosnan did a really cool thing a couple of years ago, of, like from his house in Hawaii or whatever, and just him sitting down and watching Goldeneye and taking questions from people, you know, in the chat and stuff. That's awesome. And uh, and he just had a lot of cool anecdotes about the making of Goldeneye and like. That's cool. You, again, you'd think Pierce Brosnan, being this really dignified actor and shit, might not know a lot you know, out of entertainment, you know, outside of what he, he could, could be work. someone you could see as maybe being snobby. Yeah, like we're not like even, but movies. you know, a lot of actors are just like, I just make the movie and I never watch my, or, and I'm not aware of the culture surrounding oh, okay. it, you know, that right, right. Thing. So it's more of like a, just like, like he may, he, it may be his job, but he doesn't participate yeah. in the actual like viewing experience. Yeah, like the guy that played the hound in Game of Thrones said, like, I, I, I'm, I like to be on a boat like 364 days a year, you know, right. or whenever I'm not fucking making, you know, Game of Thrones. So, um, well, all the people that are so obsessive with all with these uh, pieces of art, these actors are are creating, are in, and contribute yeah. to, and then they're just like, eh. And a lot of the times, I like. I mean, I either like actors that are real in the sense that they are. You know, well, they that, they're, that they're not totally blind to what's going on in the world, right, right. or a, an actor that is real in the way that he's like, I don't fucking give a shit. You know, it's just like <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's it's, a, it's just a matter of like they they have their own interests, and yeah. that doesn't necessarily right incorporate their job. I mean, like yes. ha, like how much of a how, we don't like do or participate in, in our day jobs in our free time in any Fuck way no. right i mean no. like and i know that no. you know we work i think a lot of glamorous jobs <laughs> that's for damn but like, sure yeah um but like you know like there's still a certain thing like once something becomes work mm-hmm. to a certain degree there i think a lot of people have this like i don't really engage with this thing as much right. outside of that right and and, it, and anyways pierce brosnan you know, you might think he might not know anything about the GoldenEye video game. Like, that might have just been... That something. I wouldn't have expected him to know much about. But but it was cool because somebody sent in the question. And it was like, what, what do you think of the GoldenEye video game? And he was just like, GoldenEye is the best shooter. And he, he just, like, knew uh, immediately... <laughs> He's like, I, I love playing that game. He's just like... That's awesome. He, 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 I like that. Oh, he God. was aware. He, so I think Pierce Brosnan's like a pretty cool down-to-earth guy in a way. Maybe we could get um, him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> I'm yeah. No, that would be fucking awesome. Yeah, if, we, okay, if, we'll if, we can get, if we can get that screen just a little bit bigger, and then we have Pierce Brosnan sitting on the couch right there yeah. next to us, I'm I'm totally down. Maybe not. You know, you know, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis once co-hosted an episode of Game Grumps. Really? Yeah. Holy shit, that's pretty awesome. So maybe we could get Jamie Lee Curtis or something else. That's fucking cool. Too. I, 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 I mean, I'm just you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just throwing names out there because yeah, but, uh, <laughs> right. But no, I mean, hey, that's you know? an attainable goal, Jamie. <laughs> 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 but um, no, what the fuck was I saying? Um, so and also, Pierce Brosnan had a cool take on all the actors that played James Bond best in his mind, and it's something okay. he tried to do, and I think he did do well. Yeah. Is that they try to? They all try to echo Sean Connery in some kind of way in their performance. Like whether it's in the inflection of their voice, they let a little bit of yeah. Scottish brogue in there, yeah. or they let you know just their swagger or physicality, the way they say Bond, James Bond. You know, they have to echo Sean right. Connery is a that, little bit, at least a little, yeah. And that's Pierce Bro- and I. Pierce Brosnan said he'd say like I'm Bond, James Bond, like a thousand times a day in the mirror just to try and get it like Sean Connery had it in his mind. And I feel like, especially in the like first couple scenes of No Time to Die, Daniel Craig does a really great job at a moment where he's very um, untrusting of the people around him. Okay. And, and in that way, that savage kind of bond that Sean Connery could be sometimes. Right. Um, like at the beginning of Diamonds Are Forever. There's just some like moments where he lets his voice his accent is like a little looser and it just sounds a bit like that brogue that Sean Connery is. So I, I think it's probably Daniel Craig's second best Bond performance in all the five movies. Okay, okay. Uh, after Casino. I, Casino Royale is still the best, bar none. Because I, yeah. I love Skyfall too. Yeah, Sky, I, I Skyfall is number really two good. for me. 
as well. But then after that, I like this one okay. best. Okay. And it's just... It's I never just, even saw Spectre. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of important to this movie. Because like, of Blofeld, right? Well, Blo and, and another character well, that is... Degree. Basically, Bond's wife in this fifth movie. Okay. I mean, th there's a lot of plot set. Um, okay. So I, I would. I mean, say that'd be good because it's like taking what they may maybe people weren't as big a fan of there, sure. but they're but they're paying it off. Hey, yeah. man, Ted, how are you doing? Welcome so in. Going, Welcome dude. in. I got my co-host Michael here for some Hades. So, Let's get this done. Second cousin as well. <laughs> Ah, Thanatos. <laughs> Jilted lover. Hey, man. Oh, well, thanks for coming to hang out, man, Ted. I appreciate your time. I know it's probably getting to be pretty late at night for you, I think, yeah? Where does he live? Coming over from uh, Scotland. Oh, Scotland, sure. We were just talking about Sean Connery a bit. Yeah, we were, just, we were just talking about the new Bond movie, which I have not seen, but Michael got a chance to see. So, yeah. How do you like How do you like Daniel Craig in these James Bond movies? If you wanna, you know, answer and shit. Because I think he's really good. I mean, my it's uh, 19. 9 p.m. Got a couple hours before. Oh, so it's not too late at night. Oh, not you. too late. Yeah, yeah. He's my dad's favorite. You know, Daniel. Craig. I mean. My dad has that old person reaction where with mm -hmm. old people, it's either this thing is old, I love it, or this thing is old, everything new is instantly better because it's new. Yeah. <laughs> you know, th those are like the two kind of ends old of the mindset that uh, an <laughs> old person like my dad can have. He's like 72, my dad. So, so either it's like, because it's yeah. new, it's awesome, or... Yeah. And it's just like the, the second, the... Billy Eilish like opening theme of fucking uh, No Time to Die starts. He's just like, this is just so much better than those old stupid James Bond movies. Just yeah. saw the movie today. I kind of put it on bar with Skyfall. Yeah, uh, see, oh uh, there you go. <laughs> Your dad is still too young to be the president. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> hey, you listeners, just because our, our uh, the United States government has fallen and it can't get up doesn't really. <laughs> oh, hey, T Bone, welcome back. I was talking, oh, yeah, a ton of people just pop it in. I was talking to my girl about that the other fucking day yeah. about seeing a new um, I've Fallen <laughs> and Can't Get Up commercial, just an infomercial randomly on, t on TV the other day. I and want I, my Fallen and I Can't Get Up I know. trap remix. And I swear, for a long time, those I've Fallen commercials were like kind of in on the joke a little bit or tried to be. Like, the, just the amount of times they'd have them say, I've Fallen and Can't Get Up. Like, right. they, they'd repeat it so much. It's like, it's like you're, you're doing it on purpose. You're kind of aware yeah. of the meme or whatever that's yeah. going on here. Oh, 100%. But this, that, I feel like that time had passed. And they did, finally did another super serious. I'm saying hello to you as well. Hey man, hey dude. Uh, I feel like they finally did another super serious. I've fallen and can't get up commercial. Where it was because actually they, disturbing. Because it was like two minutes long and they only said it like twice in the whole thing. I mean, but, that's still. I feel like that's once a minute. That's still a lot of time. It's, it, yeah, but a lot of it is like sad, slow music. Oh, and T Bone is a is a is a female too joining us. Oh hey, how's it going? And, um, <laughs> and you, said, you said man the first time. That's not all that oh, sure. I wanted to put I just say, hey, man, in general. That's, yeah. that's just how we talk. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, it was just the sad, slow music. And it's like, would you want this to happen to your own grandmother or whatever? Right. But still, no. But still, the, like, any, the, any of the two times they said, help, I've fallen. I can't get up. I can't help but burst out into laughter. Just because, because of the meme. Well, the meme has made it, but it's just the fact that they're trying so hard to bring it back, to, like, own it again. Like, you know, you got to take this shit seriously. And it's like, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Michael does have that really impeccable memory, T-Bone, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's right. <laughs> T-Bone was with us on the last Haiti stream. Oh, yeah. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> talk, talk, talk just quite a bit, actually. Oh, yeah. Was that what, about the Halloween movies and shit? Yeah, yeah. yeah no, okay. no, no, that was Bittersweet. Oh, okay. <laughs> or, 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 or maybe it was both of them. I know Bittersweet was in here, too, talking to, talking to us about Halloween and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, overall, I mean, it's 
and it's a fucking conclusion. It's like oh, okay. the only conclusion type James Bond movie they've ever done, in a sense. Right, because they never... Michael is unironically good at remembering movies, but not people. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> there, that's a very good assessment, yeah. Ulysses. Oh, so if you were here for if if, if T Bone, if you were here for just Outlast, then you might not have been on when Michael was on then, because uh, yeah. Michael basically is only here for Hades each week. Yeah, because well, you you have Tim on for Outlast, right? Uh, Outlast is uh, Tyler. Is for, okay, see that's what I, th- I thought she was here for Hades. Oh, okay. Uh, for Outlast, it's uh, Ulysses, Alex, and Tyler. Oh, okay. Um, and right. even Sky uh, hanging out off camera talking to. Hell yeah. Yeah, no, there's... I, I, w- I definitely would recommend it, and I've heard a few, like, people in reviews saying that the newest James Bond it just uh, is way too long and feels like forever, but it it really felt like the the three hours felt like two hours to me. Yeah. I also wanted to just go back up and read Mad Ted's comment there, but uh, the movie was a brilliant way to end the Craig era, yes. and I can't wait yeah. to see who they reveal next. I am in full agreement with you, Ted, because it's it's a fucking... Is this the Binding of Isaac? No, there's not enough uh, uh, child torture smoothie brain <laughs> for the <laughs> Binding of Isaac. <laughs> Uh, but hey, Smoothie Brain, how are you? Welcome in. Yeah, I was just a bunch of people coming in today. Oh, yeah. I don't even know anywhere. I thought Michael was the one who had. Oh no, Alex is the one that hates gnomes. Yeah. Yeah. So you may maybe you I'm haven't totally been on a stream with, with Michael before then. Um. Yeah. No, Alex, we've been torturing with gnome culture. Oh, oh, oh! I gotta pause this real quick, and I'll, I'll hold the all. <laughs> I will hold the picture up to the camera here. Um, but I have to um, uh, just make sure everybody sees this image of Alex with the world's biggest gnome. I don't know if that's going to... Oh, yeah, really the glare is really... Let me turn the brightness here. There we go. Alex with the world's biggest gnome. We got that motherfucker. Oh, my God. We got that motherfucker. You saw that, right? Yeah. Uh, did you like Photoshop? No, that, no, no, no. That's a real picture. Alex oh. was visiting his sister at school in Iowa, and they happened to have the world's largest gnome in right Iowa? there. Yeah, the world's I largest I gnome is in this. Iowa. So Alex, he called me, and he told me he was like, "I don't want to tell you this, but you're going to be mad if you find out <laughs> later that I didn't." So, and, I'm, and then immediately I was like, "Alex, I will give you money if you take a picture with it." <laughs> oh my I god! I need that. You did. You gave him money. I didn't, and he did it anyway. <laughs> well, Not that, that, that's a good man, right? Nadia there. guilted uh, him into doing it, actually. Oh. <laughs> and as you know, the world's uh, largest gnome also has the world's largest gnome hat. That's true. First, I thought I was going to say the largest gnome ass. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm sure Alex groped that shit while he was. Oh, uh, yeah. He, he, Alex had his hand right on the gnome's <laughs> ass the he whole was time. Like, in between those cheeks. <laughs> oh, <man>. God. <laughs> as soon as we see. Uh, Mom come as a boss, so maybe this is... Uh, yeah, well, well, The Binding of Isaac would be a... I, I, you, Michael, have you ever played The Binding of Isaac? No. That would be I've... a good game, I think, for for us, specifically, to stream. I think really? you'd enjoy that. Okay. It's a good... It's a roguelike, so it's one of those where you kind of go back to the beginning each time you die. Oh, um, okay. World's largest gnome, bro. This is a huge moment in society. <laughs> <laughs> And it's in Iowa, of course. And it's, and it's makes... a huge gnome in Alex's ass. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he fit it up his ass. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, he, what else was he going to do with it? I mean, <laughs> what else did he want to do? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a, a gnome's arms race. <laughs> for, yeah, for Alex, absolutely. There no. For Alex, it'll be a gnome ass race. I like Alex isn't even here, and we're just talking <laughs> shit about Alex That's and what gnomes. we do with uh, the Alex, the friend that loves gnomes. Yeah. All we do is talk about yeah, his passion. Yeah, I mean, passion. he likes them so much his that we have to like, respect gnomes. him yeah. Yeah. by t- talking about gnomes when he's not yeah. here. It's a, pas- <laughs> it's a passion and a fetish. Right yeah, there. it's really, it really is both. <laughs> <laughs> uh, T Bone felt so bad for Alex on the last stream because Tyler even uh, joined in. Joe Tyler and, did. Yeah, oh yeah, Tyler Hard joined in uh, <laughs> on, the, on the gnome jokes. So. <laughs> and I think that was a, I think that was like actually like initiating Tyler into our friend group a little bit <laughs> by, oh, by having him mock Alex over gnomes. <laughs> What did he say about Alex and the gnomes? Oh man, he was he made some comparisons to Hitler and <laughs> God <laughs> to Alex to Hitler for his hatred of gnomes. <laughs> I mean, Alex is kind of a like a gnome. 
hater on that level. <laughs> I mean, he does. He hates gnomes. Oh, you much. mean uh, how genocidal he is about? Yeah, so like if gnomes were real. Claims to be about gnomes. Well, yeah, claims to be. I mean, yeah. we know he that's just yeah. a cover because yeah. he secretly loves them. The only reason he wants to be around that many gnomes is to be in an orgy with them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, what, yeah, what else is he gonna do? Yeah. Alright, let's get off the dumps. What else? <laughs> what else is going I, I, I can on? stay on that topic for a good five hours. That's if we true. Want. Well, it's funny, <laughs> the one time Alex was over here for a Haiti stream mm -hmm. oh, earlier in the day. Oh, that's okay, Timo. Yeah. That's okay. It's all good. I mean. <laughs> I'm just glad that you are aware of Alex and his, and gnome, his the love gnome, of gnome, gnome obsession. Yeah, it's just his fetish, has, his, his, yeah. His, his drive, really. Yeah, yeah, it's like the whole reason he's alive still yeah. is so he can get to the next gnome. Yeah, exactly. It's like Quantum Leap, but he's always leaping to another gnome. Gnomes and visionaries, man. He just can't get <laughs> off of that shit. Yeah, the visionaries and Knights of the Magical Light trademark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trademark. I, that, that's a joke I was making during the yeah. death loop. Don't worry, we forget who we are. Especially Michael forgets who he is the most. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> after, <laughs> after Joe Biden, my memory is... That's like okay. I, I, I'm the one that will, like, remember everybody in the chat because I'm on every stream. Mm. Whereas, like, Michael's here once a week. He, he might... Until, until you've been here a couple of times, he might not He might not remember everybody. Unless I see you on a daily basis in my personal life, I can't remember your name on so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. Oh god. It's the fucking babies again. <laughs> well, you're already in Elysium. I yeah, mean, this, this is, is quick. It's only like 30 minutes in. Yeah. I just swear the gun, I think, is my best weapon in this game so far. So far, I'm, I'm, every time I've made the most progress, it's always the gun. I mean, the gun probably has the biggest advantage over any other weapon. Because and you that can you maintain get... this massive distance. Yeah. I mean, I guess the bow and arrow is a ranged weapon, though, still. Yeah, but in the same way that a gun is obviously going to be superior to a bow and arrow in well, real life. I mean, yeah. You know. <laughs> right. <laughs> Did you see, was it, uh, it was like a couple weeks ago in Norway, they had a mass yeah. shooting, but it was with a bow and arrow. I think Alex said something about that in the group chat. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I do think it got brought up there. But yeah, uh, they had just they had a straight up uh, bow and arrow based mass shooting in Norway. That's not uh, Star Wars taught me Ewoks with bows beat sci-fi lasers. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, well, Star Wars was wrong. <laughs> Star Wars just wanted to sell toys, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's the only you know. reason those fucking Ewoks are in those movies. Yep. I mean, again, if they had like had a bigger focus on how like cannibalistic and like you know how much yeah. the Ewoks fucking like ate human flesh, then I would have been more into the. My Ewoks. brother thinks the actual ending of Return of the Jedi is brutal in the fact that the Ewoks are just cheerfully playing the heads of the stormtroopers like drums. Well, they're playing you know? the helmets. You know that their you know. heads aren't in there. I mean, I'd love it if they were. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, my brother's interpretation of it is that their it's heads just that are in there. My, bro my brother would think something weird like that. <laughs> well, your brother was weird before we came around to be weird, so, yeah. you know, it's only right. He was weird before it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> you used to be cool. No, I wasn't. <laughs> You've been paying people, like, $7,000 to come to, like, the UK and watch every episode ever of The Simpsons and catalog, like... Like um, lore, it's like it's like in, in Marvel, right? How they have pe like jobs for people that just are able, like, there to keep the lore straight. They want to create a Simpson Silmarillion. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, they're making a Simpson Silmarillion. What is the point of this? I don't know, <laughs> but it, it's a thing that's happening. <laughs> I thought, come on, UK, like America is supposed to have useless ideas like this. You guys don't have to follow suit. <laughs> I think everybody in the world has useless ideas. I, I mean, the statistic I once saw was that, like, some like, 15% of British citizens believe that Sherlock Holmes was a real person, and that Winston, and the same number of people believed Winston Churchill was a fictional character. I feel like 75% of Philadelphia thinks Rocky Balboa was a real boxer. <laughs> All right, so the percentages so. might be higher in America, but <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just saying, but we all, like you said, we all have our fuck-ups of... <laughs> yeah. Every, everybody Stupidity, somewhere in say, the world but... believes something dumb. Yeah. Everywhere. I mean, yeah, but 
you kidding me with the, the fucking American education system? Yeah. It's fucking garbage, dude. Wait, I never challenged you. The entrance to your chamber looks like any other pathway in Elysium. I have hmm. with you, sir. Does it sound like he's talking to Asterius like he's never met him before? It is a custom since the time I lived and breathed in darkness. No! I think it was... I think it, it was just because he, this is the first time that the that Asterius referred to us as challenging him directly. Oh, I see. I think I told you about guys about the Chinese COVID. You told me about some of the Chinese COVID conspiracies, but you did not tell Michael about it. Uh -uh. So please, please, uh, uh, and regale us with the tale of <laughs> the COVID conspiracies in China. <laughs> ah. I, I do remember there, there being some pretty weird stuff that was coming up. <laughs> China, there are people who believe COVID ushered in a Mad Mac apocalypse. Every, yep, they, they believe that everything, <laughs> every piece of footage they see of the outside world is completely fake. The world has ended outside of China and that they're the only civilization left on Earth. Ergo, does that not indicate to them that China, their government, would have to be falsified in creating this fake footage of the outside world because the outside world wouldn't have the resources to create this fake footage of themselves? You, you would think by logic, <laughs> yes, that that would have to be something that is a thing that happened. The wait, wait, and then uh, uh, they believe a third of Japan's population died and its government fell into anarchy. Come on, the CCP would never do that. <laughs> I'm just saying, Russia also photoshops those postcards. Propaganda in China? Impossible. <laughs> if, if Russia can photoshop those postcards of Putin riding a bear with a, without a shirt on, you know, I wouldn't put it past any government to do some shit like that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not like America is devoid of that same bullshit right. propaganda. For sure. But it's, it is, it, it's funny. Our, that ours is less photoshopped for the most part. Yeah, ours is more just in, like, text and, like, in rhetoric. mouth, yeah. But I used to put put Putin's shirt on the bear to compensate it. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see, critical, any damage you I, deal I'd is still a rather to Putin, I'd really rather Putin was wearing a shirt in any photograph that I see him in. But, yeah. yeah, he's not, he's not, like, a good-looking dude. Like no. I just could just be honest. He's, I did have a um, one time uh, a guy came in here to work on our the the internet right like to mm. like to, to like try and fix like the wiring in the walls for our, our internet and he and he was yeah. Russian and he saw the postcard of Putin riding the bear <laughs> and he was like he got so excited he got excited yeah he got excited that we had a little postcard <laughs> <laughs> that's funny kind of charming in a way yeah I mean you know. <laughs> I mean, I just have it there as a joke. I don't like Putin, but... <laughs> well, it's an amazing joke. Well, Sky, Sky got that when she went to Russia. Right. For that was, that was a, Yeah. That was the trip where the, like, a, like a regular tornado blew down like yeah, 30 Yeah, that, that was when Sky discovered there is no actual architecture in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the thing with, the thing in Russia is that they they took all of the really nice buildings that that were there, and they they fucking like was it? Ulysses, you might I might need you to help me out with this. Is it that they tried to move them, or is it that they wanted to ex try to add on to them? But uh, uh, but that they she almost got killed by Russian drivers too. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. But, but yeah, can you remind me? Was it that they? that they tried to move a bunch of buildings or were they were just trying to add on to them but they basically like fucked up all of the nice buildings and if you walked around to the back side they basically like put like fucking scotch tape on them to try and hold them up on the back side because they fucked up the foundations of all of the, what used to be really nice buildings right beware the adamant rail <laughs> They wanted to make the streets wider for military parades, so they moved the buildings off their foundations and backwards. Yeah, and so yeah, any of the buildings that actually used to be nice, they're held up by cheap wooden beams. Yeah, so all of the genuinely nice architecture in Russia, if you just walk to the other side of the building, all of it looks like that now. Yeah, military parade. Or at least in this one area, anyway. Not not everywhere, I'm not saying all of Russia, but like, yeah. Military parades will always have great effects and yeah, consequences. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, you know, Kim Jong Un can't be in the military parade parades anymore because of his cheese ankle. Cheese ankle. Whoa. whoa. You, remember, you remember? You know, he ate so much cheese oh, he disappeared yeah, yeah. for months, and everybody thought he got assassinated. And it turned out that he just was too embarrassed to show everybody his cheese ankle. <laughs> Yeah. Granted, he yeah. could have just had a video taken of him from like the chest up, but you know. Right. I guess they, I guess they didn't think of that over there. You got your greater call. I'll just let you know. What what is the, what God? Oh, Artemis. Yeah, I suppose it resets anyway at the end of each. Yeah. Cheese ankle. Yeah. No, Kim Jong Un. He ate so much cheese that his ankles puffed out. Like literally just yeah, like juicy cheese, cheese. Puffs. yeah, like cheese puffs exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then he, yeah, people thought he got assassinated for like six months, and it was he just stopped making public appearances due to his cheese ankle. <laughs> uh, he's a horrible monster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> correct. But yeah, I don't know if we finished talking about James Bond or not. But yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it went by really quick. Like to me, the three hours, it felt like a. Oh, two, was it an actual three-hour movie? Almost like two hours and forty-five minutes. Damn! Did I but, see the movie, the James Bond movie. Is that the one you're asking about, yeah. Ben? Uh, I, I didn't like oh, oh, I the saw. interview. Oh, uh, what interview? The movie, the interview. Oh, I've the seen the Seth yeah. Rogen oh, games. Yeah. I've never actually watched the whole thing. I've just seen bits and pieces and like clips. Didn't we sometimes. watch it all the way through one time? Did we? Maybe like while we were high or some shit. Man, if I I don't remember it at all. So I'm uh, and I must have been some good conscience. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I could have sworn I, I never actually watched it. I I know I watched it all the way through with someone and best way to watch. It. Yeah, I know yeah. for sure. And, and because we were high, I we found it hilarious. Whoever I watched it with. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't have any recollection of watching that movie. <laughs> I mean, it's just such a stupid comedy. I mean, it's just straight up. There, it's the there, kind of stuff that we enjoy. There's, there's nothing weighty in it that would like sit in your memory banks. You know? Sure. I just, I just, even the movies that I don't remember well, I remember mm. that I saw. Yeah. Generally, and so I just, I literally have nothing from that movie in my head. Right. But no, uh, like you were, you were saying about James Bond, if you wanted to give any other thoughts. Oh, on I was it. just saying that like it, it it only feels like it's two hours long. Right. Like at least me and my dad were so into it that uh, we did not feel the extra runtime. Um, That's a good sign. Yeah. Whereas I've heard some people are saying it just some, something like Dune feels long, and uh, something like what was another movie that came out recently. Got one cat up here. Checking all the cats. Huh. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, like, uh, I mean, I've like a lot of people say that about the Lord of the Rings, and they make fun of all the endings. I never felt that during no. those movies, you know. Like I was saying in that workshop discussion I had, I mean, I said that I enjoy watching all. I can watch all nine hours of it and be perfectly happy doing so, you know. Yeah. yeah. You know, Sky's never seen any of the Lord of the Rings movies, only The Hobbit. Oh. oh Which no. I wouldn't be only surprised the, the if you were off uh, right. uh, watching The Lord of the Rings. Wouldn't it suck if you went in thinking you are going to watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy and ended up by act per chance watching the Hobbit trilogy instead? I mean, I feel like you could just leave though, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> At some point you'd lose interest. It's like I feel like the only reason a person would stick through all three Hobbit movies is because they've already watched all three Lord of the Ring movies. And are I never like, even watched the third one, and I'm a diehard Lord of the Rings fan. No, I know you're a die, but I'm just saying, like anybody that has no prior investment in Lord of the Rings, right, I don't right. think is just gonna watch all the Hobbit. Although, I'll, maybe you could argue then that they wouldn't have something so so superior to compare it to. That's yeah. true. That maybe it would come off better then. She gave um, up after the second one. So did I. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly when I gave up. Right. <laughs> oh shit! Stopped at exactly the wrong moment. Right? I like. I like that they did the Greek spelling of demon there when he said it. Oh yep. Yeah. Actually, say demon. Yeah. 
I mean, he still pronounced it like demon, but you know. Uh, I'm not a fan, T-Bone. I am not a fan of the Hobbit trilogy. I don't like those movies at all. And I don't even blame, like, Peter Jackson, right? I, the, the production of the movies was troubled to begin with. First, he had Guillermo del Toro was making them, and then he abandoned them to do a different movie. And he had studio interference before he left, and then Peter Jackson came in after, like, production was already through. And he was trying to, like, rewrite the movies on the set while they were filming to, like, try and make them better. And it was just kind of a doomed mess, I think, I from mean, the start. I mean, Ian McKellen said he literally cried because oh, yeah, of yeah. how he thought the Gandalf character was ruined for him by these Hobbit movies. Well, it was, uh, it was specifically, um, yeah, it's three movies, tortures, who dragged out of one short book. Yeah, exactly. But no, uh, that, that moment, um, Ian McKellen was sitting at the, uh, the table in the Hobbit hole, like Bilbo's yeah. home. And he literally, it was, it was the, like, it was the, f the fact that they had everything green screened in that moment made him right. just collapse into his hands and cry yeah. on the table. Because yeah. it, that exact same set was done in, um... It was a Justice League situation. Yeah, yeah, actually, because he had yeah. Del Toro. Yeah. Oh, yeah? No, actually, that is very similar. Um, although I think Justice League is worse than the Hobbit movies. Yeah, for I mean, I don't like part. either of them, but I do think I do think I'd say Justice League was worse. Yeah, like the Hobbit movies have some good parts, but it's like, am I, am, am I gonna sit through nine hours well, of a uh, Hobbit no. trilogy to get those few good moments? Yeah, no. There is oh, a shit. moment in, uh, it's. Either Desolation, no, well, you would remember then. I, it's in the third one where um, fucking there's basically like a DBZ battle between the DB, um, a Dragon Ball between, fight between the like Zar Sauron and oh, I think um, I've seen the clip of it. Fucking Gandalf yeah, I see, I think and I've seen the Galadriel clip. in her like Dark Phoenix mode. Power that mode. was another problem with those movies is like mm. they tried to just shove stuff from the Silmarillion in without yeah. actually like making it fit at all. Right, but, but, it, but it's like it's like visually, it's a cool scene sure, because sure. it's three of like these super powerful entities on Middle Earth right. all of a sudden have like this energy battle, magic battle with each sure, other. Sure, sure. Well, like you know. for actual like narrative reasons, like oh, it didn't really. There's no narrative to be had. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, and they just like. Okay, in the Hobbit, right, the original Hobbit book, Gandalf yeah. does fuck off a lot, right, and disappear, <laughs> and then he'll come back and, like, deus ex machina them out of a problem, and that and does happen. And then I come, you know. That's what... <laughs> that fit, if anybody's never seen the Fifty Shades of Gandalf the Grey That's a very funny trailer, video. Google or YouTube yeah, that Google, shit Google right Fifty now. Shades of Gandalf the Grey. That shit, was, that shit cracks so me up, especially funny. if you're stoned when you yeah. watch it. That oh, shit's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> I mean, everything's fucking funny when you're stoned, but, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, um... It's we, 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 we have reached our limits of things that Yeah, there were not. things even then... It, there are certain yeah. things even that can't make entertaining. Because, again, really, just, you know, smoking pot or what, it's only going to enhance the experience that you're having. So if you're having a negative experience, yeah. I think sometime, or a boring, it's boring, it's still going to be boring. Yeah. Kind of want yeah. Fifty Shades of Apocalypse featuring <laughs> Professor Hatch. I mean, we kind of actually got that already. Yeah. I mean... In a way. No, right. I'm so glad that X-Men Apocalypse... Or that uh, Oscar Isaac is getting another chance to do a better superhero property in Moon Knight. Yeah. At least, that, you know, hopefully that turns out well. Better than a, him playing Apocalypse. I think it has to be at least better than that, right? Like. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. Yeah. No, that shit was truly garbage. I, I, yeah, I thought that was awful. So, so I still, we still haven't watched New Mutants. We still got to do one more bad X Men movie night for me for New Mutants. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, New Mutants was a fucking treasure too. <laughs> was it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one. I thought you said was just a little more boring, whereas Dark Phoenix was like yeah. actually just trash. Well, Dark Phoenix is also more boring than New Moon. Um, oh, really? It. Yeah. I mean, well, it's like because we had a whole friend group to watch fucking Dark Phoenix. It was slightly less like awful to sit through. 
Yeah. Well, Apocalypse was actually pretty funny, like, in a bad way. Yeah. And at least there was, like, a good Quicksilver scene in the movie. Yeah, the Quicksilver scene is good. And... Do you know that scene in that awful Apocalypse movie? Where Apocalypse made Professor X's hair fall out by reaming him in the ass. It's supposed to be a mental battle, but it looked like porn. You know, that that that, that is an accurate description of that scene, though. Very accurate. <laughs> It does. If you pause it at the right moment, it just looks like Apocalypse is just having sex with Xavier. It really does. Yeah. But, I mean, even there, there's, like, a moment I like of Xavier in Apocalypse where fucking... The one where he's taking it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but precisely bef one scene before that, I think... Um, where he's, like, having Professor Xavier project to the world, you know. His, <laughs> his uh, fucking... Uh, <laughs> I'm not even gonna attempt to, like, uh, talk about a dramatic scene in that movie. <laughs> I mean, now you can. It's, it's, you said there's one. There's... <laughs> yeah. Nah, never mind. No, 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 please, please, please. I know I'm making jokes, but... No, no, I mean, it's just, with, with Ulysses here, I'm never going to be able to get through one sense of fucking talking <laughs> about X-Men Apocalypse without it rightly so being torn apart. Right. But, you know... But, like, if there's a good scene in there that stands alone on its own, I mean... Yeah, I mean, there are a few. Like, Apocalypse is, is like, the whole franchise of those, those, of those X-Men sequels. Yeah. I mean, get worse from the point of Days of Future Past. Like, First Class is good. Days of Future, Pla uh, Days of Future Class is really good. Yep. And then at each progressive X-Men movie after that, besides Logan, um, just is gets to be such crap. So. Yeah, no, they, they, they do. They do. Very sadly, they do, but they do. Oh, is this... Tell T Bone about that. Oh, yeah, no, um so I I took like a just a screenshot of the moment where like it like Xavier is like most hunched over. It, it looked like Apocalypse was huddled just, over. Just him, bending you know? him over, right? Yeah. And I so I took a screenshot of that and then I had a I had a scammer like try and call me a bunch of times and I I, I kept I, I answered like two times and was like stop calling me and they kept going. I texted them that picture <laughs> and I never got another call That's from that phone. Awesome. Number. <laughs> wow, that is cool. <laughs> I, I sent them that picture the one time and then they were just like, All right, don't call that guy anymore. I, I've got to use that fucking trick. Yeah, I've got the screen grab. I can yeah, send it to you. It, send it to me. I'm going to start sending that to everybody that fucks with me. They're, <laughs> they're getting that. They're getting reamed in the ass, just like Xavier Just like Xavier. Yeah. Yeah, just like uh, those phone scammers. They think they, they think they can scam you, but I, I'll scam yeah. them back. <laughs> I'm going to show you sites you never wanted to see. Yeah, you never <laughs> wanted to see Xavier get <laughs> fucked by Apocalypse. <laughs> I mean, the only apocalypse in that movie was happening in Xavier's <laughs> butthole. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, seriously though, okay, can we talk about the fact that, that in that movie the uh, the character Apocalypse disarms all the Dukes off thug. of Earth? I'm a yeah. thug. For doing that, I'm a thug. It's but, a thug reaction, dude. But, but seriously, the mm. Apocalypse, all he does in that movie is eliminate all of the nuclear uh, weapons from Earth. Well, so first, first, Earth he, safer. first he fires all the nukes, and then he's like, now they're destroyed, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, and then he just gets rid of them all. Yeah. And so, like, humanity, so Apocalypse... He, humanity is just... Get, get, safer. Is, they're really getting mixed signals here. Yeah, like, he gave really mixed signals as a villain in that movie. Yeah. It's like, humanity would be like, so do you want me to date you or not? That would be, like, humanity's yeah. reaction to Yeah, it. exactly. Fucking Magneto, meanwhile, kills millions of people and gets away yeah. scot-free at the end of that movie yeah. because he helped, like, team up with them at the very end. Yeah, that always forgives everything. Yeah. Like, no no, no harm, no foul, right? Like, Well, I fucking hate Mystique in those movies, too. Oh, after, Jennifer Lawrence, After yeah. her, Jennifer Lawrence's second movie is Mystique, all her fucking performances suck in those movies. Yeah, she clearly didn't. Well, she clearly didn't give a shit. Yeah. She just clearly did not care. Well, she gets the same fucking character arc in, like... That's not her fault, necessarily. It's the yeah. writers, but, like, still. Well, it's like in Days of Future Past, she's, like, this roguish character who can't decide whether she's good or not. And I also it, wasn't a fan of her in First Class, to be honest, either. Right. 
Well, I'm, yeah, I know, but I I'm saying, like, the best past. she ever was was in Days of Future yeah. Past. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Because of her character arc. And then they just always kind of scrap what fucking happens with her. In the previous movie. At the end of every one, and then it's kind of just reset. Oh, I'm this roguish character. Can you trust me? And it's like, you've been doing nothing but saving the Earth the last 20 years. How would we not fucking trust you, right. I guess, at this point? Oh, well, also, T-Bone, you're, what you, I missed your comment earlier, but I, I kind of saw it about uh, Storm. Um, and you wanted to first see class Storm. is really good. Yeah, I like First Class quite a bit. First Class is like a, a James Bond X Men movie at times with how fucking. The, the only thing that makes me that not like First Class as much as Days of Future Past is Jennifer Lawrence's Mystique. I just don't care for her even in that movie. Yeah. But the whole I just thought like like the they they fumbled the the mune and proud allegory yeah, so I thought they, overplayed in I that thought they first fumbled movie. the like civil rights allegory a little bit in that movie it's just like it was better when mystique didn't talk in those other x-men movies basically i thought i loved rebecca romaine stamos as mystique yeah. i thought she was awesome I, I, that version of mystique is badass i mean she's closer to like cassandra kane should be pulled off in the comics than, you know, <laughs> right like in the first x-men movie than she is but yeah but in a way you don't imagine that mystique would be a super chatty character or one that would have to talk a lot I feel like when in she a was way, just a sex. I didn't. I didn't think she came off as just a sex I mean, besides, I thought she came off as the, competent. It's a, fair, it's a fair point. Besides, you know, besides the fact that she is like naked and all. Oh sure, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. It's just that I thought she came off as competent. You know, where versus where she did not come off as competent in the other films. And Jennifer Lawrence's Mystique also naked for two whole. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a, yeah. So, well, so they did first class. I guess she's she, only yeah, super maybe, naked yeah, not in first uh, class, but then in Apocalypse. Days is she uh, naked in Apocalypse? Is a future too? past and or, or is it not? It, well, once Apocalypse starts, Jennifer Lawrence stops trying, and they never right. put the blue makeup on her anymore. They, yeah, they don't she, even she's put the blue makeup on. She's just always Jennifer Lawrence for like eighty percent of the movies. You know. I also, I guess I, 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 I didn't think it came oh, off as like you overly. Uh, you can go fish if you go down there. Oh shit. I guess it also, it never came up as, like, yes, she's naked, and yes, it is sexualized, but it never came off as as obnoxious to me, because I knew the director was a was a gay dude, and so I'm like, clearly he's not doing that for his own... I'm sorry, Brian the actor Singer. playing Mystique? No, oh, Brian oh. Singer. I just, oh. the, the director being a gay dude, I, I just never took it as, like, well, the director's clearly just trying to augment this didn't, character. You didn't think he could you know? be predatory in that way? Yeah, I, I, it, didn't, it didn't come off. Now, Brian Singer is predatory towards young male actors, we have learned in the you know, recent years. Uh, yeah. He's kind of a pedophile. Um, but, um, but like in your last comment, it's like, yeah, once Jennifer Lawrence just gave up with the blue makeup, it's yeah. like... It's, it's like, like it, you kind of have to have the blue makeup. It, it'd be, be like, it's like the, a Nightcrawler didn't have the blue makeup. The actor or play, Hulk was playing never Batman, great. being like, "I just like to not have the mask or the." Yeah, don't, the I don't want to wear ears. The or mask a or the cape. I the just cape. don't want to do That's very it. unnecessary. Right. You know? Like I don't know. Yeah. It's just um. Like just like uh, like if they do Mystique in you know the MCU right yeah. in this new version, I'd like her to wear the like white dress I with want the skulls that, on her back. That's the that's cool, what I'd coolest like to see. Mystique has ever looked and yeah. what she pretty much always looks in like. In the comics, anyways, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a normal comic book costume, but yeah. the, the skull belt and the white dress, yeah. Yeah, I mean that that's a badass look in the comics. Hell yeah! And I I think Re Rebecca Romaine Stamos's characterization is honestly true to like what I imagine yeah. her to be like in yeah. real life. You know, but she she had this like she was she had this competent, duplicitous like, but also like loyal to like a certain set of ideas. Yeah, like she she just I don't know she felt earnest to the character. She certainly did. I don't know. Um, like, I'm not saying that, like, no one can have and, problems and with the presentation. It, like, whatever. But, like, yeah. people have their own opinion. I'm not even disagreeing with you that she was sexualized, because she was. But I still felt like it felt truer to the character. And Mystique is a schemer in the comics. She like, is, she, she constantly, yeah. she's like a star scream type, almost, but less bitchy and screaming uh, right. uh, towards uh, Megatron shit. But right. she's always plotting. I mean, usually when Mag, at least, like, at first with Magneto, she's pretty loyal 
Probably old Magneto. That's true. But Magneto kind of sells her out like a bitch in three, though, when she yeah. gets the cure injected into her, and then Magneto's like, well, I guess fuck you, <laughs> and <laughs> right. just leaves. But re- the rest of the time, you can never really guess what Mystique's allegiances are. And a that's per- true. A person like that. She should that, be hard to read. And, and that's what I think Rebecca Remain Stamos is able to get across really Right, well. the but, fact that she didn't talk a lot kind of added to that, like, all right, who is she really loyal to? Yeah. Kind of thing. What was that last comment? Oh, uh, you're you're fighting Hades now, so uh, we'll we'll look at that after this boss. Well, you, you, if you want to kind of keep an eye on the comments for her while I yeah, oh for sure, I, I will play. for sure. Um, so I I made that mistake last time of fighting Hades and not giving and it all to... my <laughs> attention. So. Right. This is also specifically uh, that like like super 300 plus damage thing that can also hurt you. That's the what I used to beat Hades the last time. Uh, I gotcha. So I got that again. Awesome. Yeah, for anybody who's never played Hades before, Hades is of course the final boss of the game. Although so, Charon is harder, you say, yeah? Charon is a motherfucker. Yeah, you don't fuck with that guy. He is, he is truly Lord of the Dead and shit, but um, Hades is hard to beat as well, so... We never got that father-son scene with Magneto and Quicksilver. That, that really was annoying in yeah. fucking Apocalypse. The fact that they're teeing it up the entire movie. And then they never do For Quicksilver and Magneto to talk to each other. And Not only that, but Quicksilver was already the best part of that movie. Yeah. And so they're going to just let the, the best character in the movie not get, like, an important, like, character scene. Right. <laughs> and, like, the fucking, the fact that the scene where they finally have dialogue with each other, Magneto's like, I'm your and Quicksilver's like what and he's like uh mm. I, I know <laughs> Professor Xavier I know him you know it's just like some throwaway bullshit that he's uh, it, it would have been it would have been a real twist if he said mother <laughs> right that's what Martian Manhunters reveal yeah, Mar- Superman Ma- yeah Martian and, Manhunter and, uh, the Snyder cut of Superman I've been your I've been your mother this entire time <laughs> I nursed you from birth Superman <laughs> yeah Martha, Martha Manhunter dude <laughs> That's like the funniest fucking That's the best thing that came out of Zack Snyder's Zack Justice Snyder's League. Justice League. Hands yeah. down. Martha Manhunter. Yeah. I mean, tell me, anybody in the chat who saw that scene in Zack Snyder's Justice League and where, didn't where, think where that. Superman's mom, Martha, turns into Martian Manhunter, it, it does not raise questions, doesn't it? Like, like was what? he, was, Mar- was is Martian Manhunter actually been does, Superman's does mom this whole time? Martha can't even exist. Has yeah. it always been Martian Manhunter? Yeah, yeah. Did he, like, kill her when Superman first landed on Earth? Like, did, was, was, it was, was that Martian Manhunter that found Superman did, in the pot? Did Martian like, Manhunter, as a woman, fuck Kevin Costner yeah. at, at, at multiple yeah. times throughout their marriage? Yeah, was she married to Kevin? Was she the one, or was Martian Manhunter clearly the one actually married to Kevin? Costner. So many questions. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's like, what the fuck? So that that just blew my mind in that fucking movie. Uh, is this the first health bar of yeah. 80s? Oh shit. And I, I came into this with only one uh oh, health bar. Uh, yeah, we're one only one um, extra life. Oh sure. So damn. Hey man, it's <laughs> it, it, it's hard. Hades is hard. This is hard. Yeah. Uh, no the matter, no matter how many times you you've beaten Hades, Hades it, it never is gets, always like, gonna truly be easy. It's always a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, he's always gonna be a bit. Behind that egg. Should I come cuddle on me? Huh? So yeah, no? if, if we're not talking a lot at this moment, it's just because I'm trying to give Sage what advantage she can have here. <laughs> Can't tell if a face palm emoji was done or not to uh, I think it was just a laugh. Oh laugh, okay. Yeah, that's my eyes, eyesight is also terrible. So when, I, when are you going to get glasses? I no, swear to I, God. I have glasses. Why aren't you ever wearing them? <laughs> well, it's just, I swear, every week you tell me that your eyesight's like, oh, my eyesight sucks. I can't see any of this. I, <laughs> There's a solution. You know, for the most part. <laughs> you just time, don't want to look like a nerd. <laughs> that's fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> one of us. One of us. <laughs> one of us. No, I am one of us for sure, but it's just... Um, 
It, I mean, if the more you wear glasses, like a, you know, yep, it makes them worse over time. Yeah. Yep. But I mean, also at so, a certain point, you have to just wear them because otherwise, you're not going to be able to see anyway. Let's finish this. Thing. <laughs> Screen like a little Thank like you, a star nosed mole rat. Oh yeah, you guys, we're we're uh, one follower away from one forty. I thought you were going to say one father away because of fighting Hades and shit. But, oh. <laughs> um, a real, yeah, that is all. Fuck you, Dad! Yeah. No, like, for the most part, you don't need to see really well at a long distance, you know. Um, fuck it, I can see a movie fine from the last row and shit. I like that your argument is just that I don't need to see that well. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you know. Yeah. It's overrated, you know. Seeing well, that's yeah, that's overrated. Like when I'm around my girlfriend's dad, who is completely legally blind, I'm like, I can see really well, you know. Far sighted or near sighted? I'm near sighted. So like, the, for the, I can make out everything on the screen except pretty for well. like some can, pretty some small, of the sometimes small worded comments sure. in the corner, you know. Well, you know, I can read all of those. And do you know what yeah. I have on my face? What? Glasses. <laughs> yeah. That's because you're a fucking nerd, dude. I am a nerd. <laughs> Clearly you read too many books as a kid. <laughs> yeah, you read too much. Me nerd. or Sage? <laughs> Literacy <laughs> claims another victim. <laughs> I like that they noticed you were getting spicy when I pointed out your fucking nerd uh, oh, credentials. God. Oh, oh, damn it. Oh, man. Oh, we are like halfway through that second health Shit. bar. We got, we got five. I only had the one health bar, too, that whole time. That is, that's, well, that's impressive in itself. Oh, if I, if I had, if I had gotten there long. with the full number of death defies, I think I would have gotten it. Yeah, for sure. All right. Let's see if I can do Sage any is better. Low key with the shade. I am low key with the shade sometimes. Ooh, <laughs> you know what? Now that Michael's playing, I'm gonna go get myself a little bit of coffee. There, I did say myself like I'm Irish. <laughs> so accurate. Creme brulee flavored coffee. No, I failed, sir. No thanks to father. Irish up that coffee, Ulysses says. Just take it easy. I don't have any daily, otherwise it works. There isn't any question in my mind. Yeah. We have a lot of alcohol, though. We don't have great things. I love fucking Bailey's, dude. So don't lose hope. You'll keep all of this. I hope you're right. Oh. The faded list of minor prophecies was requisitioned through the house contractors, I guess. It didn't take you for an agent of the fates. Michael, how do you fuck a bait? Let's, you know that's not what he said. Didn't you say Bailey's first, Ulysses? <laughs> <laughs> you know what you're doing. I oh. got yeah, my uh, mug of the Gotham City skyline here, too. Oh, that's fucking cool. Have you put something hot enough in this mug? Um, oh, actually, it looks like it's starting to do it. Let me see. Yeah, see, so like, you can kind of, you can see that you that, put some hot in it, and it starts to... Yeah, that is a fucking yeah, awesome Yeah, if you mug. put hot stuff in here, it starts to, like, reveal, like, Oh, a bunch you can of, see like, it really well on the camera, even, there. Yeah. The bat symbol and all that shows up. Only, yeah, only if you put the hot, actual hot liquid in it, but... <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I love the dialogue of Orpheus in this game, because for the most part, whenever you talk to Orpheus, yeah, and Orpheus is a he, but like every time you talk to Orpheus, he's just like, he's sassy. Are are you gonna <laughs> are you gonna be a fucking artist and perform? And he's like, I'm I'm a musician. I'm an artist. I don't fucking make art. 95% of the week, man. <laughs> yeah, artists only do art like 5% of the time. Yeah. <laughs> we know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're writers. I, exactly. We never write. <laughs> I mean, I... You write more, than, more often than I do. Academically, I have to, but yeah. It's or if like, this looks like Elvira's homeless sister. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, That's pretty good. That's, That's true. Pretty good. 
I should. I. I, I you know what? I, I haven't seen Elvira. Anything? Any Elvira? I don't think I've ever seen it. I mean, I, all, what, you, what what has Elvira been to male adolescents growing up except for you know a gigantic pair of breasts? You know. I, I think Elvira's sassy. I I think she's, she's awesome. very boxy. I like her. I, I like she, her. She's very boxy. For, too, yeah. I like her for her personality, chap. Yes, uh, all two of them. You know. Shut up. <laughs> Elvira's awesome. Do you, you did you really never see any Elvira like like as as a kid? I saw a lot of her, you know. I mean, yeah, you know, what, you see. know what I'm saying, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, but but she was like like the crypt keeper type, like she was a crypt keeper like character. I wanted right? she did the narration. Bone her with all of the crypt keeper's bones, man. Oh my god. <laughs> we'll keep going. I mean, gonna, he is gonna keep it going. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank, thank you, man. I, I agree. Elvira's hot. All right. I'm not saying that that's not true, but I mean, also, she's, she's not that. Hot. It, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're just fucking with me. You're just trying to because fuck they're with probably me. implants. I mean, that's what I, what I'm getting at here. Do you think so? I mean, well, that was again. That wasn't my focus in the first place. Though. <laughs> really? I thought you brought her upper boob. Too. I know I didn't. You did. <laughs> I'm talking about how she's she's a badass goth lady that does. Like, I love badass goth ladies, but okay, you, you so, specifically brought up her tits. I'm oh, pretty sure. <laughs> I'm just I'm just kidding, people. He, he he was not the first to bring up her tits. Anyway, Elvira did also go on to have her own. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. He didn't. He didn't get me. He did not got me. That's not true. <laughs> Let's see. Nah, it's he's just, he's the opposite me. of what he's saying is true. <laughs> but no, Elvira was just a Elvira was a genuine, like a, just a fun character too, because yeah. she she went on to just be the star of her own movies, or at least right. a movie. Like, like she you know she did the thing where she introduces the films, but then mm. I mean like here's the thing. I can only get so mad at you for I can well I can't get mad at you all for making all the boob jokes because she herself would make those jokes constantly. Well, that's, like, why that's, that's, part, that's why like the but, appeal I mean, of was, a character like Power Girl in the comics to begin with, like Power Girl was one of those characters, uh, and to re- basically yeah. to, to remove her tits is to remove a lot of what her character comments on, you know. I haven't read enough Power Girl, Power Girl comics, I guess. Uh, but I'm just saying, like, dialogue. a part of, like, El, in the same way that it would be a part of Elvira's personality, in that, like, right. this is something I can, Some com- characters I can are, playfully comment on. Right, know? yeah, playfully comment. Some characters are inherently sexual, and it is yeah. part of the character. I agree. That is true. That, that is true. That even Some applied the to Miss, the original Miss Marvel to begin with. And then they've gone a very, you know, butch direction with the character later on in the comics. But, sure. you know, it is what it is. I mean, it's not that they can't change that if it's done well. Like, um, like I mean, I like I like the new Captain Marvel. Right. Exactly. It just depends on how you do it. It yeah. does. I think Bayonetta is a fucking hilarious, very entertaining character. Yeah. Ironically, I watched a video on the history of Power Girls costume the other day. Interesting. Right. <laughs> Yeah. What a coincidence. In in the history, how long did it say that she had the, the boob the, win- the, the boob boob window? window? The boob window. window. Sure. You you even knew the. T- well, yeah, of course. <laughs> that's, what else are you gonna see? That it's, what, what else are you gonna call that? It, it's a boob window. It's like I mean, come on. <laughs> she might have invented the boob window. Ah, she probably didn't invent the boob window. It's an interesting question. Who invented the boob window? Yeah, was that in the history of the at all? <laughs> boob window is a pretty common term these days. Do you hear it a lot, uh, Ulysses? So, did you hear that term thrown around a lot in your day-to-day life? All right, I'm gonna try to just go through these chambers as, yeah, yeah. as fast as I can. Yeah, I'm always keeping my eye out for it. Are you just of your intently kind of anticipating to come up a lot? <laughs> did it for a minute sound like a lighthouse was outside sounding a foghorn I did <laughs> not hear that but... I swore I heard that for a second Let's see true shot oh hell yeah 
Oh, you know what? No, no. You know what, T-Bone? You know how I know that you haven't been on a show with Michael before? Is that... Do you remember when I was talking about the whole idea of... That most the of the X-Men run okay. being time travelers? Like, all of them being time travelers? I was, I was, like, pitching that idea to you during one of the Back for Blood streams. Michael is the person that, like really kind of came up with that idea of having the X-Men all be tied. Like, that that whole kind of concept I pitched to you, a lot of that came from this guy's brain. Twas me. I would say, she had most of her runtime. They've tried other things, but ultimately she went back to boob window. Nobody knows knew what to do with her. I mean, right. here's the thing. Sometimes, sometimes sometimes they fill it with an S or right. S-like insignia because the Superman well, connect, Supergirl so, connection. Well, here, here's an interesting thing, right? Okay, so mm. let's let's say you have a costume, right? Like a really mm. sexualized female character's costume, right? Mm. And it's like at, when when it first is created, it's super over the top. It's super over sexualized. It's not that creative, right? But fifty years later, that costume stuck Thank around. You. It grew on people. It became iconic, and then people decide, hey, this is you know we want to try and change it again because of how sexual it is. Right, but that but it's been around for so long. It's become kind of iconic, and, and, and right. then when you do when then when you do change it, you lose an iconic look. Yeah, and then it has a negative impact. Then how much do you want to keep the sexualized element, right? Well, because like sometimes it like if it's if yeah. it's been around for so long, like and then that some some of it is what people recognize and like about a character. That's a good question. I do you feel know? like eventually, if a character has such an iconic look, it's going to become part of their personality right. in a way. Like typically, uh, uh, like Poison Ivy is like. I mean, maybe not one specific costume every single time, oh. but like she's always a hundred percent has always been a sexual character. So it's she's like always, always, like, yeah. That's just always something that happens. But like with Poison yeah. Ivy, it kind of feels right. Like that just it, yeah. she's about seduction, she's about manipulation through her sexual power. Like that's right. a like if you took that away from the character, I mean I just I feel and, like And I feel that's you know, a similar case with Power Girl. I feel like she's a hero equivalent to Poison to, Ivy. In, in in a way, yeah. Because I'm not opposed to messing with like sexualized costumes and kind of yeah. trying to update them. I'm not. It's just that you have to replace it with something that is also iconic and, and good, too. You well, know? yeah. I mean, Mortal I mean Kombat, honestly... Mortal right. Kombat, yeah. in the last, like, game or two, Mortal Kombat grew up a lot and, yeah. and, and really got better about the female characters' costumes. And I really like the new costumes. Right. I really, really, really like the costumes for the female characters in the most for recent, sure. like, game or two games. Yeah. And I think they, they, they did a really good job updating them so that they are not so overtly sexual anymore. Yeah. But not it doesn't always work out as well as that every time, you know? I mean, any character that's, like, a really good character is going to have something outside of sexuality, you know. Well, yeah, that's why, a, yeah, you need kind to of personality them trait. in other ways. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, right, it's a difficult balance. That's why there's usually a character change if the costume changes drastically. But, yeah, true, yeah. true. Like Captain Marvel becoming, yeah. or Miss Marvel becoming Captain Marvel. Oh, by the way, uh, Michael, is an interesting thing uh, to bring up to you. Have mm. you seen that they're totally, or, well, I, I guess we, we got to kind of see it, but, like, they are changing up Miss Marvel a bit. Mm. For the MC, her MCU version, the homosexual of all, all the, the shrubberies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, true. Irish Pally, welcome. <laughs> How you doing today, man? Hey, how's it going? Irish Pally, Irish Pally is awesome. Irish, this is my co-host Michael. I don't know if you've been on one of these streams before, but welcome in, dude. Hope you're having a good day. Thank you for joining us. How's it going? Um, I hope oh, everybody's second. having a good day. If anybody, yeah. if I missed anybody, if I didn't greet anybody, I apologize. I miss an occasional boob, at least with Melina. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I agree you know, about you do, Melina. You do want some boobs in Mortal Kombat. I think uh, Sindel, even in the newest game, Sindel has yeah. still got some serious boobage. <laughs> boobage. <laughs> um, but I'm sorry, Mike. I'm that, totally that's a good, that's a good coinage. Boobage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, when it, it's boobage when it's a positive good I think, I think. Oh, a, positive, a net good in I mean, the... It's a net good. It's, 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 it's the mathematical term. It's a boobage. It's what John Stuart Mill in utilitarian terms would yeah, say exactly. is morally It's the, uti it's the utilitarian upright. way of saying yeah. it. <laughs> it's how, it's how, uh, 
<laughs> I believe Kant talked a good Kant, deal about uh, George Orwell used it uh, yeah. a lot, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like they were Bayonetta. Yeah. Right. Bayonetta is another example where I'm like, I feel like if you did, if you desexualized Bayonetta, you would lose a lot of the fun of Bayonetta. Of, of, of a lot of the point. Of, the point of Bayonetta. Yeah, you'd lose a lot of the point of Bayonetta. Yeah. She's 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 sexual for a reason, and like right. it, it it is a built-in element of her. Because you know, Bayonetta is an interesting one because Bayonetta is a super sexualized female character design mm -hmm. that was created by a female character designer. Was it really? Yeah, Bayonetta was oh. created by a woman. I thought Bayonetta was made by the same uh, game the creator programmer. as uh, Devil the May Cry. Yes, the programmer, the designer okay. that like made the combat. Yeah. Right, like the guy who like this is going to be the combat. This is like the idea of the game. But the but the person who did the art mm -hmm. that like came up with oh. how Bayonetta would look and how exactly how her powers would actually be used that well, was that's a woman. interesting because it was always like in the same way that Dante is this hot guy, mm -hmm. this hot, stylish guy. You I would always, not put a shirt on in Devil May Cry 3, and I think exactly. that's a good thing. Right, but but that's like the same, uh, I always thought, assumed it was like that same approach to Bayonetta, basically. Yeah, it's similar for sure, yeah. but they but it was 100% a woman that designed Bayonetta's actual character design. I've missed out on some of the last few oh, comments. It's, so. it's okay, I'll, I'll pull up in here. It looks like they do that in the new Bayonetta, no more naked monster summons. Uh, really? Did they did they actually get rid of that, or is is it just that we've seen so little footage of the game that like we haven't had a chance to get like a good look at it? I don't know. I'd be, I would be a little disappointed if they changed that. I mean, she even has the naked monster summons in Super Smash Bros. Right? Like she even really? in oh, Smash. Oh, she gets naked even in uh, Smash. It doesn't come up at quite as often. Her oh, like, okay. clothes don't come off as much, but they're close. Right. Like it fits almost as yeah. much. These are the logistics I'm very interested in hearing about. It's, uh, so it's B-Star. Yeah, B-Star, I, I agree, uh, Ulysses. You know I hate B-Stars. You know I hate that shit. Yeah, you are. I'm not a fan. Not a fan. I'm very, very picky with anime in general. I, I still hold a grudge against Sky for even fucking br bringing that shit in existence to my, uh... <laughs> yeah, seriously. Well, I mean, it was, it was Sky who really made us watch it, though, right? Yeah. Uh, not sure if it's just for the trailer, but saw no skin when the beast came. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's a that is that is a concern to me, mm -hmm. if only because it seems like cre creativity, I guess, being kind of pushed down in favor of making something that's like tamer to attract a wider audience. And I just Bayonetta doesn't need to attract a wider audience. Bayonetta is a niche weird little thing and I think it should remain a niche weird little thing. That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's just me, but Yeah. Like if something has super mainstream appeal, it likely has something more than sex going on for it. Anyway. And I mean I think Bayonetta yeah. has more and, than and that it does, going but on, yeah, but, but I'm just saying it like, is niche. something is allowed to have a more narrow focus if it is a more niche thing. Yeah, right? yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah. No, I don't know. I hope um I mean, I'm just, goddamn, I've been waiting fucking almost eight years, I think, for Bayonetta 3. Yeah. Right. So at this point, that's like the longest I've, like the longest I've known about a game between it, like being in, uh, like, or you know what, no, four that's years that's from that's when that's they true. announced it. Uh -huh. But. The first story Bayonetta has more now, but that over. first story was all over the game. Well, I mean, it, it was ridiculous and over the top and like didn't always make a lot of sense but i do think it was playing it as a tongue-in-cheek parody of anime right like it wasn't just a straightforward goofy anime story it was also kind of a making fun of other anime that is super over the top and i, I actually think it's uh the first bayonetta story is kind of clever in a way because it is it is kind of taking the piss out of yeah. out of other over the top anime. I agree. I know that's that. how I perceived it, at least when I when I first played it. It had this almost parody kind of aspect to it. I mean, they literally wink at the camera. Yeah. They, and they literally wink right. directly they, at the camera. Yeah. In that game. <laughs> yeah <true. laughs> so like, that's I, I feel a like big tip off. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, even the second one. I don't think the second one really has that much more like of a like intellectual like narrative to it you know i think it's i think it's basically the same kind of level of writing it's just that it's all so goofy and ridiculous to begin with you know 
And I mean, I, I love the, I think the Bayonetta games are, they just make me laugh. Like, it's not even yeah. like I'm playing them, it's like, oh, she's so hot, I'm gonna play this game. Right. I, just, I think it's fucking hilarious. Yeah. I, I get, like, I laugh out loud playing those games because of how over the top it is. <laughs> I feel and like it, that other reaction you made fun of is the reaction a dude would have playing, like, uh, Dead or Dead on Arrival. What is it? Dead, Dead or Alive? Alive? Yeah, 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 see, now those games to me do that, feel that, like... That's all those, those games are nothing but exploitation. Yeah, games, yeah, so. those games actually feel like that to me. Whereas right. I think Bayonetta has this tongue-in-cheek kind of comedy sensibility to it. Well, let's face it, most of us just remember a hot and spanking angles. I mean, yeah, that's that's a, one of the best moments yeah. in the game, for sure. Yeah. There's a lot there's a lot of spanking going on in Bayonetta in general, that's true. Or those terrible agony and succubus games. Oh well those were yeah, those yeah, those were also yeah, those were just like I don't know shock if value those games. like and those were just trying to be like gross. Yeah. Too. Like it's like Agony was this game where it's like it's it's like it's kinda like an outlast style mm. thing where you have to like run and hide from monsters. But it's supposed to be taking place in like a really fucked up like disturbingly graphic depiction of hell mm. um and like in theory it sounded like it could have been cool mm. like you're like a lost soul you're trying to like escape from hell so you have to kind of play like an outlast style game to get out mm -hmm. uh, but the actual gameplay was garbage really? it, was, it was programmed so so badly oh, wow. and it just it was just it was it was bad it was bad sure. it, it was glitchy a lot of it yeah the game just didn't work very mm. well Go it whatever. was like the the difficulty wasn't balanced well, so like mm. some parts would be like super easy, barely an inconvenience, and then other times it would be <laughs> right. it would be just like brutally difficult for like no reason. Yeah. Never played Agony. I remember looking to get it, but the reviews made me hold my. Yeah, yeah. The only way Agony would be worth playing is if you did like a. Hey, haha, ha, we're gonna play like a terrible game and make fun of it, like a Mystery Science Theater 3000 type thing. Which at some point we actually on this channel are going to do. Oh, bad games? We're gonna do bad oh, games. That's eventually. Awesome. That's a eventually. Great idea. I will, that's yeah. something I kinda wanna work up to and have better equipment for. Yeah. Because I wanna I want that to be like a show that you, me, Alex, and Ulysses all come in That'd and we just great. roast a bad game. <laughs> I would love that. We just that. talk shit about some awful game. Ride to Hell Retribution, Condemned 2, <laughs> Agony maybe could even be one well, at some point. Any, like, movie tie-in video game that's ever been made. Pretty much any <laughs> movie tie-in video game. Yeah. You watch Pitch Meeting? Yes! Yes, yeah. Michael actually yeah. put me on to those videos. I love um, those movie pitches. I mean, and so that, funny. Ryan George is the name of the YouTube creator. A any fucking but video you could that give that me guy money. makes. Yeah. <laughs> is it, is that the first guy to sell insurance video? <laughs> yeah. But you could, you could give me some money, though. <laughs> Yeah. But something bad might happen. But what if it doesn't? But it could. <laughs> no, those I I love that guy. He's, oh, yeah. he's hilarious. He play he just yeah. even in good in like movies I yeah. really do like, he just is able to point out these little like logical fallacies. Oh dude, I love when he talks about Nightmare Before Christmas and he's yep. like, uh, oh fucking Jack Skellington is a tyrant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like uh is he uh uh he's he's gonna sing this song called What's This because he doesn't know what snow is. Yeah. And then he's gonna sing children are throwing snowballs instead of throwing heads. I thought you just said he didn't know what snow was. Oh whoopsie. <laughs> Yeah, no, I love yeah. that shit. That guy's great. What do you do when there's something that isn't yours and you want it? I take it. Yep, he's yeah. A, yeah, Jack Skellington being like a cultural appropriator. <laughs> <laughs> there's like so many fun, funny ass interpretations of Jack Skellington in that video. You know, it's funny because I just watched Nightmare Before Christmas again um, yeah. very recently. And I couldn't help but think about that video while yeah. I was watching. The no, movie. I saw it not too long ago either, and I was thinking like Jack Skellington is like a much more interestingly flawed character if you, than you, you, if you like, yeah, if you apply him almost being like this villainous tyrant, yeah, uh, to the to the story. He's like the Fidel Castro of holidays. And yeah, stuff. he's like, yeah. <laughs> he's like the, something absolutely ridiculous is tight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Or in that video, it's cultural appropriation is tight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or uh, his Coraline, the Coraline one was also great. Because uh, yeah. I did, I also watched Coraline again for the first time in a lot, long time. Yeah. Um. And and yeah, that I mean that that I think that movie holds up really well. But like, yeah, no, that's dark. That's a dark yeah. kids movie. You haven't watched the No Time to Die pitch meeting, have you? No. Okay. Because, I mean, I just based I don't know what you've heard, but but that there is. 
some things I'm surprised have done a really good job of being like uh, protecting spoilers and that. Okay. Last Because usually the uh, the internet can't help but spoil literally everything, everything. that ever yeah. happens. No, exactly. I'm surprised that I don't know what's going to happen in my own life at that time. <laughs> right. Based on how awful the internet is, it yeah. is with spoilers. <laughs> right. That would be the one positive I'm use. The turn internet. on Twitter and they're going to like have a list of what all my Christmas presents are. Right. Like, God damn it! No, that is the one positive <laughs> use of the internet is if it could tell the future for me, but it can't even fucking do that. But you right. know what? Even if that happened, it would just be like some dystopian minority report shit that would yeah. start happening with it. Or you'd realize your life is a BuzzFeed article, you know, clickbait thing. They might spoil thing. my death. I hope they do. Yeah. I hope they do. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, Ulysses, that's coming down hard on stage. Let's see. Let's see. It's just the things that they could spoil. Yeah. Right? Like, I, mean, it's, it's, I mean, like, some of the shit yeah. that comes out, okay. like, literally the day of, like, I, I, I already know literally the entire post credit scene of Eternals. And well, the movie's what? not Is even it out. Really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I won't say it because I know yeah, other people You're fight. not going to be a dick. Um, I, I don't want to spoil it like the internet so likes to do, but 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 and I mean it was cool. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, sure. I won't I won't spe say anything specifically, but it is. Uh, the only thing I'll say is it's it it is it is a cool thing from the comics that I was like that I kind of never thought we would see. Really? Okay. Even, even now, after all these things, I never thought we'd see have happened. It was still a character or a thing that I was like. You know, or I'll say it's it's a noun <laughs> that oh. I just was like, even even after all the other things they've done, this still seems like something they wouldn't go for. But hey, they went for it. That's cool. Nouns are tight, so nouns I'm, are tight. Yeah, I'm super. <laughs> looking. Nouns are my favorite, so um, I'm super looking at. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and, you know, it's whatever. I I don't for Marvel stuff. I'm not as like. I, I don't get as concerned with I don't, Marvel I don't stuff. know if anybody's been looking forward to Eternals as their like number one Marvel movie, you know. Yeah, no, no, Nadia, maybe. Really? Yeah, that's easily the one she's looking forward to most out of, like, the upcoming couple. Interesting. Movies. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for, like, to the most, like, off-the-cuff, hopefully, you know. Did they finally reveal the standalone Herbie movie for Fantastic Rocket Power? <laughs> Herbie, man. Ooh. That character fucking Oh, we got a kitty! And you don't want to be here, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one's just looking at me like, how how dare you pick my cat up? Ooh, kitty, somebody said on the comments. Yep, that was Biscuit. She didn't want to hang out with us, though. <laughs> that, yep, that was Biscuit. Yep. Gravy is sleeping in, like, a window box, like, right next to us right here. And then Nutmeg is somewhere. I don't know. Probably sleeping. That's what cats spend most of their time Live doing. their lives. Yeah, they sleep like 16 hours a day. Yeah. Do you know cats, um, if they break a bone, they purr, and it makes it heal faster? Really? Yeah, they could like the, what cat is purring. The I don't know, but science some, behind that. I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't explain it to you in detail, but I I know for a fact that cats can like kind of force their um their their like bones to like heal or injuries in general to heal faster. But it's like it's some, something something to do with the vibrating the their whole body. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know? Biscuit Biscuit probably comes up over here at the most. Yeah. All right. I'm doing pretty good so far on this yeah. run through. And I think just like always, we basically only will be able to do two runs today. Yeah. Because right. that's that's just kinda Most how likely. long the runs have gotten. I've gotten to Elysium already. It's good time I'm making. Um let's yeah. see. Hell yeah. Maybe I should do that one. Let's see. Did not end up with divine protection for like the thousandth time, but or whatever. <laughs> When that finally happens on stream, you're, it's going to be oh. a cheer worthy moment. We will glow ourselves with the accomplishment. Did you say we'll blow ourselves? <laughs> I said glow. Oh, okay. Now, whose mind is in the gutter? 
I never said it was. <laughs> I, ne I never claimed to have a mind that has at any point gotten out of a gutter. Oh, uh, you were pretty out of the I gutter. I live in the gutter. El Elviro, I hope so. But this is because this is, this is Elvira, though. <laughs> I didn't have an answer. <laughs> I didn't have it sounded like a leprechaun from The Simpsons just now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what do I was just stammering. Stage is innocent. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty filthy. I'm pretty filthy. Yeah. I've heard Sage's, like, serial killer thoughts. I don't know, man. <laughs> My serial killer thoughts? Yeah. Like Hannibal Lecter. On occasion. <laughs> well, Ulysses is the one who won't stop talking about eating people on every stream. Yeah, but Ulysses has a good heart, alright? Are you saying I don't? <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, honestly, knowing the two of you, I, I'd, I, I'd take Ulysses' heart over yours a little bit. Would you? Oh, You're really? You're cruel, Black Sun. I'm cruel. <laughs> I'm cruel. <laughs> Well, I haven't brought up eating people once today, so far. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but you will when you're on stream tonight. I know you will. We, and which, God by the way, you Michael, you, by the way, Michael, we mm. actually came up with a name for the Tuesday night show. Okay. Specifically, so Rated M for Immaturity is the, uh -huh. the name of the channel. I'm not changing that. We're sticking with that name. But right. Tuesday nights, Gnomes, Cannibalism, and Politics. I like it. That's, that's, I, I want like a it. little logo of a gnome yeah. eating another gnome with a little <laughs> eye boated sticker on his hat. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I like that a lot. But yeah, I like the idea that like we'll we'll just get into, uh, uh, you know, it's over time. We you know as we this channel's around for longer. Oh, and there's another cat. Hello. Did I interrupt your important cat business? <laughs> you were on your way somewhere super important and I interrupted it. <laughs> All right. She's just like, please let me go. <laughs> you know I'm not having fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is gravy. That is gravy. <laughs> She's the biggest one. Well, the oldest too, right? She's the biggest and the oldest. Well, unless you're counting the dog, she's the she's oh, the sure. biggest and the oldest. But right. but but for the cats, for sure. Yeah. Surprised she didn't whine. Yeah, I know she's so vocal. Also, these other two cats that I adopted, uh -huh. uh, both of them, mm. super quiet before we got them. Now, they yell constantly. <laughs> it's because of gravy. Because they listen to Gravy meow all the time, and now they do it too. So all three of them are just talking all the time. Damn. It's cute, it is, but goddamn, they just talk so much. That was the exact opposite of Aunt Lynn's cat. That was like the quietest cat I've ever seen. Really? It's super quiet? Yeah. Put it in, put it in a room with Gravy for like a day, <laughs> and it'll come yeah. back and it will not shut up. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. I think it's just a matter of cats, like they just... A lot of the time, they just adopt it from seeing another cat do it, right? Like, right. Or when oh, they sure. see a baby do it. I mean, cats meowing in the first place is adopted from human children because they know right. that they could get it. They saw, oh, they back them attention. attention. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. Just like cats also took the hi the hissing, right? They took that from snakes. Cats literally saw snakes do that at some point in time, huh. and we're like, shit, we're gonna do that. That seems that's intimidating <laughs> as fuck. We're gonna do that too. <laughs> So the cats are the real cultural appropriators. The cats are the, the cats are the greatest <laughs> ap cultural appropriators of the animal kingdom. Yeah. They're the, they're the fiercest animal appropriators. <laughs> they're the fiercest cultural appropriators of the animal kingdom. All right, John, John <laughs> Peters, John Waters, whatever the fuck you John Peters, <laughs> John, this is not John Waters. <laughs> I, would, I would love to see John Waters produce a Superman movie, though. What oh, the yeah. fuck would that I look know, like? I know, right? <laughs> Superman would have to fight like a giant alien penis. <laughs> that, that, that's what John Waters would do. You know I'm right. No, no, no you're very right. See. Last stand. Come on, I can never get it. All right, let's do that. Gravy is the yeah. Gravy is the ringleader. She is. Huh. Make a brainiac. That's what John Waters would do. The alien penis. 
I swear to God, I swear, if we, if you, if you ask John Waters, what would you do with the Superman movie? Wow, Pat Bug from an online store. No, um, God, where did this come from? Um, I've, I mean, I've, I've had it for a long time. Yeah. Oh, uh, this came from Loot Crate. Oh, Loot back Crate. Back when Loot Crate was didn't good. suck. Yeah, yeah, back when it, it, at a certain point they had good stuff, and then it like totally fell apart, and they stopped. They, they started having just, like, kind of repetitive garbage yeah. in those things. But, like, I did get it for a little while, and this, this came from one of those. From finding on eBay or something. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you can. I, I'm sorry, Michael. What were you going to say? I totally I was just going to say that we just talked to Patroclus, and mm -hmm. it must be only, like, the second or third time we've talked to him because he still doesn't even have a yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. Like, the game hasn't named him Patroclus yet. Yeah. Yeah, no, not at all. I think we don't know who the fuck that is when obviously that's Patrick. Well, if you know your Greek mythology. Yeah. I mean, well, to be fair, he hasn't like really said anything about Achilles yet or talking oh, about Oh, has he not? Also. Okay. Yeah. You're probably right. Probably. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah probably. I just, yeah, Batman color changing mug or Gotham Skyline color changing mug. Something like that. Yeah. I have also got a good, uh, uh, my fiance got it for me for my last birthday, but I've got a, a Federal Bureau of Control mug. That's cool. That's like, that's like my favorite coffee mug. <laughs> I bet. Oh, uh, we also have, we have, uh, we have matching, like, couples mugs. That's the, that, and that's like, they're covered in passages from the, uh, Egyptian Book of the Dead. Oh, that's cool. Uh, that's, uh, those are also really cool ones. Damn. In the name of Hades. All right. Uh, yeah, they're pretty badass. I'll, I'll, one of these days, I'll, I'll be drinking out of one of those on a stream, and I'll <laughs> show them up at the camera. Hell yeah. One of these days. <laughs> oh, one of these days. Let's see. All right. Where? Oh, there we go. Yeah, we're out. Hey, we're almost out of October. We're almost out of out of October. Not a. Oh, the honeymooners. Yep. Is that what you, I was yep. not intentionally <laughs> referencing the honeymooners, but I under. Oh. I definitely. I can see why that's the first thing you think of. No, I was when I. Oh, you were. Oh, okay. <laughs> I I was not thinking about it at all. <laughs> My dad is very old. He's seventy-two. So. so that's something he definitely so. is culturally like. Familiar uh, I thought you were going to say something he culturally appropriated. Like, <laughs> I, think, I think he just watched Honeymooners. I don't know if he Well, you know, in this one. day and age, that, <laughs> that might as well be appropriate. Yeah, I don't know what the hell else isn't cultural appropriation at this point. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. But no, um... I do, yeah, I hope, I hope some, one of these days, you we're able to do, uh... Like a, a, a much longer Haiti stream, though. I know. I mean, this, this game is meant to be played for like six at, hours. Le at least three hours, it's I three feel hours. like. Because it's like we each only get one run in. Yeah. And then we have to end. Because you want to be able to get into it. I don't think you can, like, super feel like, oh my god, you know, I, I can play through the entire, you know, all the chambers at least twice. You want to at least feel like you could do that, you know? Right. I, mean, I feel like you maybe do it twice in the time we have, but no more. Right. Right. No more than twice. Damn it. All right. But uh, start. It, well, so I don't know. I still don't know exactly what date it's going to be. November, right? But some. Yeah, sometime in November, uh, we. I will start working my morning shifts that I've been asking for at my job. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, uh, we'll be able to do a second Haiti stream every week on Thursday. That's what I'm looking forward to. That. So, yeah, so it's, it'll literally be like I'll get off work at 2, and mm -hmm. I will go straight home. Yeah. And uh, I'll be home by 3, about. And then, mm. I mean, other than taking the, the dog outside um, yeah. and, like, just checking out all the animals and stuff and making sure they're good, um, if you, you basically could just meet me here at 3. Yeah, all right. Every awesome. day. 
uh, yeah, every Tuesday, I mean, or you know, whatever, right. whatever it does end up working out. That's what I was gonna, like. I, I probably won't be able to do it every Thursday because sure. some Thursdays I will have to do homework and no, shit. Fair but enough. well, once, uh, once, yeah, once we go to New November, I will do it. I will be doing a stream every, at least every day of the like the Monday through Friday. Yeah, because awesome. so right now it's like. I've been doing, you know, Monday and Tuesday I've been packing a bunch of speed Feed homework to Sage's animals. I think that will kill them, Ulysses, I'm not sure, but... <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, once I'm working in the mornings here, I'll be able to... Because I've, I've been just been doing mostly Mondays and Tuesdays, and then occasionally if I'll be able to pull one up late at night on another day, or yeah. like here and there, maybe we get another one in. Um, but yeah, starting November I'll be able to do a, at least a couple of... At least, like, I'd say, like, a three-hour stream every day. Please don't kill the animal, Ulysses. <laughs> <laughs> that is something you have you'd have to say to Ulysses. Like Ulysses, just resist that impulse. <laughs> <laughs> but but eat but but eat the people. That's okay. Yeah, the people are fine. Eat the that, people. <laughs> Ulysses, just, like I'm all for that. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I'll probably I'll probably. We'll start working in a daily stream at about three three p.m. or maybe maybe I'll do three thirty. So I have some time to like decompress, get home, decompress for sure. Then do a stream for about yeah three thirty to six thirty. I think every day. Yeah, that's probably, awesome. That's maybe not, awesome. I don't know what the weekends will look like, but really... like at least during the week, probably do yeah. it. Do uh three thirty to six thirty like every day. Yeah, so that'll be fun. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's amazing how much dialogue they fucking wrote. Like, oh, you come through so this much. so many it's like times, a and they never encyclopedia worth of dialogue. Nice, more sage and Michael. Yeah, man, Michael, at least uh, occasionally Thank more you. often <laughs> on, on Thursdays. Yeah. And then... Oh yeah, I'll be here definitely more. I mean, someday I want to do this as a full-time job, right? So I mean, you know, yeah. if I can eventually work up to it, I honestly <laughs> wouldn't mind doing like an eight-hour stream every day. Uh, yeah, that, I mean that'd be cool to actually just be able to walk in here and just yeah, start like I just have a stream you. kind of going already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I would legit do like a nine-to-five stream. Literally, like during the work day yeah. of the week, and actually put in a so whole entire forty hours. You could play that song nine to five on an endless loop. Working nine to five. That would never get annoyed. No, no, no. It'd be fun forever. <laughs> Walk in, start streaming, just like the men's room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck, you, Lizzie? That's too <laughs> graphic, man. I just get. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to get Ulysses in here on fucking streams with us and shit. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, man, that's the thing is, like, I feel like because of my work schedule, you, like, so, like, you and me can get to hang out right. every week, and then right. me and Ulysses and Alex get to hang out every week. Right. But, like, you and Ulysses and Alex, like, I feel like that, like, like almost never, never happens. A, yeah. I mean, um, I'm, just, glad, I'm glad for Ulysses' involvement in the chat and shit, because... Me, well, I mean, yeah, he's still really hanging out with interact. Us, Yeah. But it, it is more fun in person, yeah. for sure. Shit. Now, now I need a flipping Achilles' husband in here to give me some life. Okay. This run is not going well. No. I mean, it was going well up to this point. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, up until this boss, it was going pretty good. This is a tough boss, though. So. I mean, like they're at, all. I mean, they're all kind like of. Like at tough, this point, the Furies and the Hydra are pretty easy to. Yeah, those are those are to pretty beat, simple. but these guys still give a bit of trouble. Yeah. Especially just because there's two of them. Like that really like. Mm. Right. Well, no, I think no matter what, we'll end the stream with this run, though, just because, like, oh, the run takes so long to, like, make real progress in, mm -hmm. that if I, if we did start another run, even right now, oh, yeah. we would be going well over the dark time. time slot, so. There he is. Okay. But, hey, if you're hanging out in the chat and you want to come, if you, if you want to be hanging out with us more, 
6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time to 9.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, we will be doing our final Halloween stream. Oh, finishing cool. up the Whistleblower expansion for Outlast. And then I think we're going to play a few rounds of the Friday the 13th multiplayer. Ooh, I liked that video game a lot. I mean, I never got to play it a lot myself, but it it was really fun. Yeah, and that'll be it. Alex, Ulysses, Tyler, and then yeah. Sky off camera. Which I don't even know if you can hear around the stream, honestly, but <laughs> not doing detention. You know, I you know, you know, Ulysses, the reason I decided against doing detention is because I wanted to do something that we either could finish, like, all in one sitting tonight, or Friday the 13th is multiplayer. We're not like, it's not like a story where we're going to need to come back and, like, finish that game, you know? Like, we yeah. could just play a few rounds, goof off upload that video and then we don't have to be back with Friday the 13th next week because it's not like there's more story that we're continuing you know whereas I think detention I don't think like if we were just doing detention and we didn't have any outlast to do tonight I think we could do detention in one sitting um but because we have outlast to finish first I think um I don't, I don't think we'd be able to do the whole thing and I kind of want to save detention for one of those streams where we actually could just do the whole game at once because it's only a couple hours long, two and a half hours long, maybe yeah. three at the mm. most. That's a good one. That's a really good one, actually. Yeah. And next year, um, hey, maybe by next year uh, we'll be doing this even more frequently and we can play even more spooky games That'd during the cool. month of October. Yeah. Not that we can't play horror games outside of that month, but there is something fun about, like, you know, engaging with the season. Mm hmm Oh, definitely. I mean, did you ever do any... I assume you didn't do any, like, Resident Evil stuff for Halloween, you know? Or? Not for Halloween, but we but, but we have also... We'd also done two full Resident Evil... Right, you'd already... Yeah, I mean, yeah. Just earlier this year. For sure. So, There's always second Halloween, a.k.a. Christmas. That's true. <laughs> just, play, just play Halloween games for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I like the idea. Let's see. Oh, actually, I could get another life if I go with Athena. Here goes. Do it. Yeah. I, I definitely, I, I, you know, I think I did want to Easter, too. Just every holiday, do horror games. <laughs> flag day. That's cool, Dead man. space for flag day. <laughs> <laughs> but no, plus, there's, like, horror games on, like, older consoles that I have, and I would love to get all the equipment, right, for the be able to do other uh, other older consoles and then stream you know just a whole bunch of different stuff well any occasion to make any other holiday more like halloween is yeah always I'm for an it. improvement i'm <laughs> for it yeah the Anybody in the chat watching any spooky games? Or any, watching any spooky <laughs> movies for the month? Has anybody been engaging with the Halloween season? I watched Hellraiser 2 last night. Which you said you liked better than the first one? Yeah, I still... There were still... I think there were still some of the scripts I just... Because I'd seen it a long time ago. Oh, sure. So I was re-watching it. But, um... I just thought Hellraiser 2, I just, so far the scripts in the Hellraiser movies, I just think are a little underbaked. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, moment. that's not okay. really what they're, like, No, I know, I know. Is, I it's have. just that there are other horror movies, uh, like Halloween, from even yeah. before that, that I'm like, oh, I like, actually like Laurie Strode in this yeah, character Yeah, well, I like the movie. script of a few um, of them. Whereas I just don't yeah. care about the, like, the, like, the kind of, the screen queen of the hell of these first two Hellraiser movies. I just don't yeah. really care about her as a character, you know? Yeah. Do you want to see Halloween Kill? I know Michael uh, recommended I, that uh, I pretty heavily. It, yeah, I recommend it big time. Um, I haven't it, seen it, that one yet, but I want to. I would say if you like the Halloween sequels that are... Uh, maybe a bit lighter on story and a bit more about the the kills, you know, of Michael Myers. Then I think you will like Halloween Not Kills at the top, more. Uh, corner, I think. What's that? Oh, I thought you were poison. Never mind. Oh yeah, I there's one right in the center. Oh, there, I didn't so even that see I that. One. For that. But if I want scary, I just turn on the news. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, sure, that's true. That's so. how that's how the news makes its money. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think personally, if you're a big Halloween fan, you're gonna like um, 
Halloween kills almost matter what. Uh, if you really like the Lori character, Jamie Lee Curtis, and what she brings to the movies, you might be a little more disappointed by it. But It's not as much of a focus on her. Yeah, like she's in it. She's still a main character. But it's more like, about Michael and him murdering people. Yeah, it, again, it's like the Empire Strikes Back of Halloween movies, where it's it's Michael Strikes Back. And, right, even though he started yeah. the shit in the first place. And he doesn't really deserve <laughs> right. to get revenge. But <laughs> Michael's all about his strikes, strike one, two, and three with a knife you know and shit so <laughs> let's see impervious longer death defiance yes let's go with that okay and then isn't that also true for the empire well that's that you know what that is true because they they don't yeah they did kind of huh. start the ship you don't think about that this point did i've grown up with them and now i'm a completionist yeah i just I just gotta watch all of the i i think you'll like it then I'm, I, so I was, I was just talking about uh, uh, my fiance Nadia about it last night, um, but because we have we relatively recently have watched Hellraiser, Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, right? A lot, and then a few others, a lot of like kind of a first class like scream. The class, um, yeah. And I thought I, I was telling her I was like, it would kind of be fun if we if we just watched Hellraiser too. It'd be kind of fun to then watch Nightmare Two, yeah. Scream Two, like but but like just watch. Let's watch all the twos. Then right. watch. Let's watch all the threes. Then let's watch all the fours, which is where we start to see some of the franchises go into space. <laughs> yeah. Hellraiser four. Hellraiser four. Usually past three, any horror series starts to become enormous dog shit. I know, and I want to watch <laughs> all of them. Yeah, I, I want to see ten Hellraiser movies. Ten Hellraiser. Ten Hellraiser movies. Yeah, I don't think I would be into Hellraiser enough to do all the Hellraiser movies. I mean, I'm person. just kind of curious. More than anything, yeah, like sure. just what are they? How goofy? Do I mean, I know there's part of four is in space. I know they go to space. Yeah, right. I do. I do. I want to at least have seen all of the horror films where the franchises inexplicably go, end up going it's into space. Yeah. At some point, we're gonna have uh, Alien not in space. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That Didn't is. Yeah. No. There's a there's a lot of Hellraiser, and there's there's another one coming out. Jesus. That doesn't even have a release date, but there's another Hellraiser in the movie in the works right now. The last one only came out in 2018, so, like, they never really stopped making those movies. Right. Like, Hellraiser just never went away. Right. Yeah, and it just seems like every time they redo it, it seems like... It's dumber. Yeah, and, I mean, and, like, again, having not seen them, but just seeing, like, thumbnails of the costumes and stuff. Just, it just, look worse it just seems time. like they're trying to just, like, recapture the, the original every time, basically. Yeah. I will say, uh, this, so, for, so, so, for, so far, I've, I've watched Tailraiser 1 and 2 recently, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've seen others, just not in a long time. But Hellraiser 1, the, the, the second one I preferred over the first one. It just had more going on. Sure. more going on quickly mm. Mm. <laughs> like I feel like the first movie just it spent so much time on just this human affair without right. action like like I, I just did, wasn't into well, the I, I like the body horror of the first movie I do too a lot. I think it's very well done yeah. but it only makes up like 10% of the movie like, I, mean, really, I mean, there's a lot of suspense of the uncle up in the attic most of the movie I would say is about the uncle up in the attic and like See, is he going to come down? Is he going to be discovered? I feel like it's just basically suspense around that, yeah. more or less. And, and it's not the Hellraiser character is barely anything in the movie. More like you know. and the yeah, other Cenobites. Yeah, right. Well, so the, 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 all the Cenobites, they're in the second movie a lot more. Oh, sure. Um, in fact, you even go into the Hell dimension that they came from, actually. Oh, okay. You just actually spend a decent amount of time. And it's this, like, crazy infinite labyrinth with a giant, like, pyramid in the sky that, like, turns humans, Damn. like, new, newly tortured human souls into more Cenobites. And, like, they actually lay some mythology around that That's I actually cool. really liked. And that, that was the big thing that gave, that gave the second movie an edge over the first one to me. Oh, awesome. Um, you actually get to see the hellscape and, and shit and mm. actually spend time with that world a little bit more. <laughs> um... Because the second movie takes place in an, it's like in an asylum. I still right? like that they call them Seder snacks, like Scooby snacks almost. But. <laughs> That's awesome. You Seder snacks. <laughs> oh, Seder snacks. God damn it, you listen. <laughs> you always, you always got to make it the the grossest version. It's the, the Scooby snacks. It was nice and wholesome and family friendly. <laughs> now you're talking about testicles. 
they actually are called. I know that that's what those are called. We're talking. You know what you're doing. You're right, Ulysses. You are correct. Uh, I'm not even going to try with that one. I'm not. I'm just, I'm just going to give it. I'm just going to let you have it. <laughs> All right, we got one last chance to beat Hades today. Yeah. Let's see. What weapon are you using? Uh, the sword. sword? Um, right? okay. That does critical damage. Nice. Do we ever get to see the Titan, uh, more of the Titans in this game? No, but they just talked about them a little bit. They did, they did. I was now. just curious. I mean, and they said in this iteration that they cut the Titans up into pieces, so they're not really in a... They yeah, also position. cut the Titans into pieces in the uh, animated sequel to the uh, Kevin Sorbo, Hercules, and oh. uh, Lucy Lalazina. I, I remember they that. They made a that, that, that is animated a, film. That is a deep cut. That was from way back in the That's day. That's a deep cut. Fucking... Also, I remember yeah. literally like four different times as a young child, yeah. they uh, played Remember the Titans, the Denzel Washington movie. Oh my movie god, in, I know. They showed class. in high schools in America constantly. Oh yeah, I, that's like the only movie we ever it, watched It's like we school. assume it was like the, at, right after the Declaration of Independence they played that football game. <laughs> you know? But, uh, but, but no, I, I remember in like grade school there were a number of times where they would come in and they like they they would it was that movie they were playing, but I would hear the title and be like, oh, is that that fucking movie with Hercules and the and then it, the football would start. And I'd be like, god damn it, that's not what I thought it was. Well, I never thought Remember the Titans was going to be that exciting. Anytime my teachers like primed us for it, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like Remember the Titans. But, I just I thought. Know. Like thirty god forty yeah, I know. million times. So. A, I did get a little tired of it. I mean, like I'm usually the kind of person that like if I really like something, I could like like watch it or listen to it on repeat. Like I could just fucking right. like obsessively like like without getting tired of it. Mm. But like that movie, I have seen way too many times. Oh yeah. That scene where the one guy calls the other guy. So, yep, I remember that. I remember <laughs> that pretty distinctively. <laughs> Gets me every time, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I like I do think it's a good movie. It's just that I've seen it so many times that, like, I just have a kind of a... Like, I just I just don't... Like, I, I'm in the mindset now where I'm like, ugh, remember the Titans. Right. <laughs> you know? Like, if, if you give me another, like, 15 years, 15 then I'll, years. I'll be into it again, I bet. Right. Fair <laughs> enough. I, mean, I need to not see it for, like, another 10 years. And then I'll, and then I promise I will appreciate that movie again. Yeah. It's like it's like if you're a parent and you have a kid and they mm. want to watch like the same movie over and over again. Except oh, yeah. for me, it was my teachers <laughs> were the wanted kids. to watch the movie. <laughs> yeah, the teachers were the kids that wouldn't stop watching the same movie. <laughs> right. Nope, 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 nope. Ooh, that was close. Time to watch Frozen for the 213th time. Yeah, week. right. <laughs> See, that's the thing, is I genuinely can still say I enjoy Frozen, because I saw it once, and I never had to think about it again. Did you ever see Frozen 2? No, what, I heard what it was... dog shit that Yeah, I heard was. Frozen 2 was garbage. It's just like... From a lot of people that liked the first one, I heard it was garbage. Right. So. Corey, like Corey, Corey and Martin liked the first one, mm. and then Space Jam. <laughs> I haven't I, seen Space Jam 2 yet. No, the first one. Oh. He's keep on saying, my poor parents, I tortured them with Space Jam as oh, a kid. Oh, yeah, right. And I probably did that with Space Jam, actually. I watched know. Space Jam a lot. I think I watched, yeah, I think we both watched Space Jam a lot as kids. I'm sure I, our parents just I was just so into that Michael PT. Jordan fucking opening was like, I thought... Ah, that could be good. Well, not that far, but like, uh, where it's like, free. it's the jam, come get oh, the, the jam, Charles or whatever. Back. Uh, was that Charles Barkley? Yeah, Charles Barkley. Oh, no yeah. shit. All right. Well, that's yeah. badass. I, 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 Charles Barkley's funny. But that, that opening always made me think Michael Jordan... Welcome to the slam. Yeah. It made me think Come Michael Jordan was like a fucking superhero, dude. Uh, it's just at like, Corbin's wedding earlier this summer, yeah. they actually had the fucking... The, like, the bridal and groom's 
party uh-huh. come out in jerseys to Space Jam oh as a like, part of the wedding ceremony. Jesus Christ. I thought that was awesome. <laughs> but they had custom jerseys made and everything. <laughs> Well, good for Cor- Corbin, man. Yeah, Tebow, oh, that's shit. a no-name 20s wedding that I, I'm talking about. He got married earlier this year, and they did that. They did, like, that Space Jam. I like, think I got him. You got him! You did it! <laughs> nice! That's... <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> it's hard when it's not lined up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, got that motherfucker. All right, let's talk to Persephone once before I have to get out of here. Hell yeah, dude. Well, hey, at least that's a good stopping point for a stream, though. We beat Hades yep. for the second time on stream. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what lore are we going to get now? What story see. pieces are we going to get? Quick as a flash that time. <laughs> what all the ladies always say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ladies always say I'm the quick as a flash. I think it's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now we're in mainland Greece here. Not enough greasy, sweaty, naked men for it to be Greece, but I believe it otherwise. Yeah, where's all the naked dudes wrestling? Yeah. Looks like a Pokemon level now, but fruits and vegetables thrive within the hidden gardens of Persephone. The one time It's funny that she set her garden up so close to the entrance. Like considering she like escaped and wanted to get away, you'd think she would just have moved a little further. It might just supposed to be shorthand that conveys like that is, yeah. you know. No, I mean it, it that does make sense. Good fertilizer down there. <laughs> yeah. Careful how I speak of them. Tell me how Oh shit. I wanted to see you too. Come, speak quickly with me, that our time together here may be as full as possible, all right? I just, I need to know what happened between you and father. Why are you here and not with us? I couldn't live with myself anymore down there. After I left Olympus, a long story in itself, I came to be with your father in the underworld. It was a shock. It's interesting, um... So, this game's taken the idea that Persephone enough, didn't totally really fit in. Because there's a lot of versions of Persephone right. that do, where he, her and Hades are actually like the most in love out of all the gods. And like, she's super right. goth. And, and they, they super, they really emphasize that here, that it was a very mutual love that her and Hades right. had. But they um, still fell out of it at some point. Um, they're still very, they're more in love, I'd say, in this game even. Um, okay. You'll just... I'll see, I'll see. Yeah. Fair. Your father could be very difficult, though he was gentle with me. Soon enough, we got on fine. Better than fine at times, but when I was a child, why, I struggled terribly. Because a child born of surface dwellers could not live down there. Could not live down there according to whom exactly? The fates. According to them, Fucking yes. Faith. <laughs> According to your father and to Nix. Even having heard, I took my chances anyway. Oh, he did emerge stillborn. Okay. Yep. That's what I was saying last time, but it, it, the game didn't like answer whether I was right about that or not. Oh, yeah. I fled and came to reside here. Above the notice of the underworld. Beneath the notice of Olympus. Oh, but... Why would father lie to you? If he never wanted you, or never wanted me, surely he had the means. Hmm. I don't know. I'm wondering the same. But, oh, look at you, Zagreus. We're hmm. running out of time. It's happening again. Stay with me, please. I'm trying, but I can't stay that much longer, I don't think. I don't want to go, Mr. Stark. <laughs> right, it is totally like that every time. <laughs> what you asked of me. Why he would lie. Tell him I must know. The same as you. And you farewell. Until we meet again. Until we... 
so you can see how many times you'd have to beat Hades because it's so incremental. What? Yeah, you only get this little is bit. Move forward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's nuts. <laughs> also, I did see. I did learn that if we we can talk to everyone we in the house of Hades, that. yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, as long as we leave the bedroom and go into the room with Skelly, it mm. will save our progress there. So oh, we actually can okay. do the story bits in the House of Hades before we stop. Okay. Um, so to, 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 to what? So. You just talk to them all and then... Yeah, basically to just Skelly. up to where you can pick your weapons and, and oh, okay. talk to Skelly. And then that's where we'll leave off. Because oh. it, will, it will save your progress there. Oh, awesome. Sounds good. Probably. <laughs> oh. You called upon your humble court musician, as I understand, Lord Hades, sir. Referring to myself, of course. Well, Orpheus, if you're quite finished with your little stint within the depths of Tartarus, I'd like to ask again. Play us a song already. Or else next time I'll not be quite so charitable with your punishment. Oh, that. I must apologize again, Lord Hades, sir. For I'm afraid that I've no wish to sing as yet, in spite of your persuasiveness, even. And that... The North is play us a song at least once already, I thought. We asked, and then he was like, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. I just love how intimidating Hades is when he talks oh, yes. to anybody in this game. Cerberus isn't here right now. <laughs> I still don't understand what is going on with that Medusa head. Why is she always so nervous about talking to us? Very schizo. Okay. <laughs> is that what it is? A schizophrenic <laughs> Medusa head? <laughs> Hey, T Bun. Do you ever, do you ever, have you ever, uh, or since, since uh, back for blood the other, the other week or so ago, have you gone back and watched any Attack on Titan yet? I'm just, I'm just curious. Mike, Michael knows how much I won't shut up about Attack on Titan. No, for years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we still need a lot of keys, so we'll focus still on that a lot next of time. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll definitely, yeah. We definitely need more keys. All right, so here it will save yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so it should save oh, yeah, the basically. the logo icon yep. right there. So okay. yeah, that's that's like kind of our good leaving off spot. Sweet. Okay, well, yeah, shit. That was a good one. Well, that was fun, we guys. Again. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, T-Bone, Ulysses, uh, Irish Callie. Let's see, who, who who's, who's all in here right now? Uh, pull up the chat list. Uh, I, oh, Irish Wake is in here. I didn't see a comment. Maybe you're just lurking. But thank you for dro dropping by anyway. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you all. Uh, we will be back with Hades to next Tuesday. Um, come back and hang out with us tonight if you want to see some, you know, Tyler being just terrified. <laughs> see ya, cuz. <laughs> do a fist bump at the end. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. we got to raid somebody mm -hmm. before we end. Who do we want to raid? Anybody in the chat has a suggestion, I will. I can do that, or uh, I will just pick somebody. If I don't see one in like 10, 20 seconds. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Are we still going right now? This we are still going at the moment. Yep. Uh, basically, until we until yeah. I hit the raid button, <laughs> we're still going. Um, I'll do the moon cocoon. He's that's been, a cool name. Yeah, he's he's been a nice uh, nice other streamer. Uh, fellow double toasted fan. Oh, sweet. All right. I don't know what the hell he's playing or watching, but uh, <laughs> all right. And then just a little ten second countdown, and we'll be gone. Yeah. yeah seriously, thanks everybody for coming to hang out. We always yeah, appreciate it. Was it. All, it's awesome. And uh, isn't this fun now that there yeah. is like an active chat kind yeah. of consistently? Like it really does add. I think something that it adds a lot. <laughs> all right. See you next time.